Hey, what's up, Vox and Hops heads? I'm Matt, the vocalist of Cryptopsy and the host of the Vox and Hops podcast. Brought to you by Sound Talent Media, where I sit down with fellow metal musicians to talk about their lives, music, and craft beer. Here we are. A few days early, I had said I was going to drop this episode on January 1st, but uh, here's a little holiday surprise for everyone. Here is the Vox and Hops BAOS podcast and Beerism.ca collaborative Top 10 Quebecois Microbrasseries of 2020. This was a very hard list to cut down to just 10, so there are a bunch of honorable mentions. But I'm going to start off by saying that I forgot to include two very, very, very important metal-ass breweries from right here in Montreal. And as soon as I finished recording this episode, I was like, Oh no, so here we go. Honorable mentions to Microbrasserie Le Fermateur and Mutoid for putting out some amazing metal ass beers here in Quebec. You guys should absolutely check them out and uh, I am very stoked about them and I'm stoked to see what 2021 brings for them, you know, for La Fermateur. They started bottling their own brews, which was a cool thing that came out of the pandemic and uh Mutoid actually opened during the pandemic. They just opened a few months ago. So support them. Check them out. Very cool breweries. Okay, let's do it. Here is the Vox and Hops BAOS podcast and Beerism.ca Top 10 Quebec Microbrasseries of 2020. I warn you, what you are about to hear is very disturbing indeed. Hey, what's up, everybody? Today, I'm with Noah Forrest of Beerism.ca and Craig Thorne of the BAOS podcast, and we are here to talk about our top 10 Quebecois microbrasseries, and I couldn't think of two better humans to do this with. I'm super stoked to be with you guys. It's a very, very cool thing that we're doing. Uh, This episode is obviously going to be on Craig's YouTube channel. You're handling the blog version, and I got the podcast. I couldn't think of better people to be with right now it's it was perfect. very very hard for us to cut yep. this down to 10 breweries oh yeah <laughs> this this was a challenge it we, was. we found it was difficult last year but now with a third person do you know what it was it was tough to cut it down to 10 but it was even cooler to see the actual volume of breweries that we agreed on i think it was it was more than 50 percent. yeah absolutely which is pretty cool yeah exactly so very impressive so really if you guys watched the video last year or listened to the podcast on vox and hops Basically, we're going to be doing the same thing. We're going to be running through our top 10 breweries in no particular order, by the way. They're not, you know, one through 10. It's just all there. And we're going to be drinking tonight where, because we're not physically in the same space, we're going to, we chose four beers to review. It doesn't specifically mean they were our ultimate favorites. They were just ones we chose to represent the breweries. And even the beers themselves aren't necessarily our favorite beers from those breweries. I'm not going to lie. The first one is my favorite, my top three favorite beers of the year. That, that is an exception to the rule. So, uh, and then afterwards at the end, we're going to talk about some of our other favorites, maybe some predictions for 2021, because it was very interesting. Last year, Maddie, we mentioned a bunch of our, uh, what we would call like our... Honorable mentions. And a, few, a bunch of those made it into the top 10 this year which is very cool. So Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see what happens next. Yeah, and I feel like this is going to be, you know, this is actually something I really look forward to. And I feel like the, the best part about this uh, this year, and I wanted to specifically mention this, is last year, you know, I was always a bit of a, not a hater, but a bit cr- overly critical of Quebec. And this year, by far, and I've said it multiple times, Quebec is the MVP of Canada. I don't feel like anywhere in the country is is doing as well as Quebec across the board. So... It made it, it, and once again, that plays into what you guys were saying. It was even more difficult to sort of choose this because there was so much fire coming out of here in every single style possible. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, you know, Quebec was was really good at most things. Um, But this, the last couple of years, maybe in particular this year, you just ended up with that extra mile of like ultra contemporary stuff, right? Like the over the top haze and uh, all the smoothies and the, the pastry stouts and all like all the new stuff um there are breweries here that are doing it better than like you said most of the country so you couple that alongside a lot of the uh the, the already established amazing stuff like Gio Giselle and Basley Dunham and like all that stuff even Harry Canna with their more classic styles so like you combine those two things together now 
and uh, it's a, it's a powerhouse of a province. It really is. <laughs> Plus the return of the crispy boys, the yes. people that have been tackling yes, that. Yes. Super excited to see where that goes. That's a really yeah. good 2021. Oh yeah, I'm excited. So, shall we just dive right in? Yeah. I, I'm thirsty, so let's do it. So the first uh, beer, basically we're going to be talking about each brewery as we uh, crack their beer. So this Champ Lieb uh, dropped this beer, Simplicité Volontaire Edition Speciale. Look how fucking French I am. Now this is I'm a... Impressed. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate y'all. Uh, this is a Czech-style Pilsner. This was aged in oak barrels for six months. I can I, I was more excited about this than any beer that we're doing because this was like... I can't express how fire this is. I'm excited. I'm so excited. So This is your first time trying it, Matt, right, if I'm not mistaken? This is absolutely my first time trying this brew, so I'm very excited because you guys have just been talking it up for the past few weeks very, very much, so I'm excited. Oh, have yeah. you tried the um, regular version of this? The... I have also not tried that, oh, no. Cool. So what's the major difference between that and this one, the six months? The six months. Yeah, on oak, too. So it's uh, he bought a big footer, uh, and nice. he, he, he lagered the, his standard Pilsner. I think he did a bigger dry hop on this batch to kind of, because it was going to be sitting so long. Um, but otherwise, I think it's pretty much the same beer. And uh, that extra lagering process just, just cleans it out that much nicer, and you get... It's not like tannic and you don't get a lot of the oak, but it's just, it's subtle and, and spicy um, mixed in with the, the, the noble spicy ops. It's just, it's special. Look at it. Cheers. Oh my gosh. Look at that line, guys. Fucking get it in you. Oh, the nose is glorious. Multi. Mm. Oh yeah. So as far as you, you were right, Matt, with the crispy boys, on top of all the things, Noah, that you mentioned, uh, Quebec was really just behind in the trendy stuff which uh, I always found quite frustrating because they were killer in so many other styles. Like every other province were trying to get our Imperial Stouts and our barrel aid stuff and our farmhouse. And uh, Crispy Boys are really in that. It was, this was the weirdest style that um, Quebec did not uh, immediately gravitate towards. And now this year, blown it out the water. Everyone's doing fire. It's just crazy. So this, this is a special beer. Champ Lieb have done, uh, you know, Noah, you're, you're probably going to speak more to this than Matt or I. Um, I've known Alex mostly just from giving him shit about lactose for a few years online. <laughs> and you've kept me... Like, I, feel, I always thought he hated me because we were always, like, joking, but we never really spoke normally. <laughs> right. We were just always giving each other shit. Um, and I, and I, now he's... I feel like you've always laced me with the Champ Lieb beers over the years, and I've got to try them as they changed and, you know, as they grew. Mm-hmm. And this year, I really feel like they've, and you can, once again, you'll be able to tell me if I'm right, but I feel like they've come into their own in a whole other way. Yeah, so um, Alex, before opening, Shawnee worked for over a decade at Le Trois So he brought them kind of through their whole thing. And, uh, you know, he's one who invented a lot of the specialty, the special stuff that they released. Like he built, I mean, him and the team, obviously. He built the IPA that, you know, was basically one of the first New Englands in the province. He did uh, Saison Brett, which was one of the first almost like Hill Farmstead Saison style Saisons in the province, that kind of stuff. And so he met some partners, opened up Sean Lieb. What is it now? Two or three years? I should know that. But I reckon about three. Yeah. Um, and they concentrate a lot on like some farmhouse stuff because they're literally like on a farm. So for him, he wants to incorporate a lot of the ingredients that he grows on site, uh, which he's done. He, like he's done some beers that have flowers in them, and he roasted his own malt and coffee, I think, at one point too, just to kind of like add hints of like terroir to to what he's doing. Um, but yeah, I would agree with you, Craig, in that he, I don't know what they've done exactly, but they've really tightened up in the last year, and everything. Um, is is really on point i know he has a, a new uh, co-brewer uh, or like I and mean, he's not an assistant brewer he's just another brewer um and uh they, they they make a really good team and they're really nailing a lot of stuff and this beer in particular i was just so excited about i got to go and try it on luca on the on the yeah the luca which is the special device to pour um beers and it ends up being super creamy and like with an insane head that just like jiggles like jello and ah it's unbelievably good <coughs> i would break quarantine for that 
<laughs> does it inject like like oxygen into it? What 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 is the whole Luker pouring system? Oh, he explained it at length, and I don't even really require. No. Or, <laughs> I think you are kind of right, though, Matt. To be honest, I think it's something to do with the, the way that's like ball yeah. bearings in it. So it's called a Luca side pull, all capitals L U K R, and the the handle is not upright. It's like on the side. Yeah, it's like and I think you pull it. You pull it right to the side to open up the valve, essentially. And there's yeah. ball bearings that let the beer out slower, and the letting it out slower creates that the head that Noah was talking about. It's like that meringue kind yep. of thing where you could probably like it's almost um, uh, you could cut it with a knife or some shit, you know? Like it's gorgeous. It has a similar vibe to uh, like uh, like a nitro pour, but not yes. quite as creamy. Um, but it's close. It's kind of like in between the two, if that makes sense. Very cool. What would be some other brews that really blew you away? I love their, um, no, no one knows more, but this, the last release was insane to me. Insane. Yeah. He's been experimenting a lot with, um, wine and, uh, he did some, he, like he has a standard saison and then he's been doing a lot of variations of that and mixing fruit and, um, grapes he's worked with other vineyards he did this really interesting version where he aged it in this weird german herbal liqueur and so you have this like classic kind of phenolic saison but with these like herbal notes and it worked surprisingly well it was really good um but like he's done several lagers he did an october fest um he has his standard pills he has a collab with this amazing amazing funny french band uh, i forget the name of it but it's a, like a lighter pilsner, that's killer too. Um, he does he like he likes big imperial stouts too. He's got his coffee imperial stout um, that he's done like four, three or four different variations of different types of bourbon barrels and stuff like that. Um, all over the place, a lot of really great stuff. Excellent. The best part, I thought he nailed the haze. So there's a yes. beer called Soleil Jean, um, and or if I'm saying that right, like Yellow Sun, and it I think was, it was yep. yep. Um, it was something that he did a few years ago. No, you gave me the original. It was just kind of like an mm-hmm. IPA, a little opaque, a little juicy, nothing like crazy. The latest one, and I imagine that it was in the pack that he sent to you, Matty. The, uh, it's, it might be too old now. If it's the same batch, it'll probably be a little yeah. on the old side. But fuck me, it was amazing. Like it was, it had that ch- milky haze, a chalky ma- uh, mouthfeel, bright and tropical and citru- it was just exceptional. That really impressed me. The fact that like, when we ha- I had this, Noah was creaming over this beer, so I was excited to try it, and it uh, blew my mind. Then I had the haze, and Noah was saying, yo, you, you're going to love this. And I was kind of skeptical, I'm not going to lie, because I hadn't traditionally loved what he did, because a lot of it was farmhouse and just not my bag. Well, some of his, sorry to cut you off, some of, uh, at the beginning, I think what he, w- what, what he was doing is he was really playing with the yeast a lot. And what ultimately ended up happening is I think a lot of the beers became phenolic, even when they weren't necessarily supposed to be so even that first batch of Solijon after a little while it started to get that that phenolic thing and a lot and it became almost like a signature across all the beers he made even if they weren't necessarily supposed to be that way um I mean maybe they were to him but in terms of like classically speaking you know um but then lately I think he's really kind of I don't know if he's changed that or what they did but everything seems to be in its proper wheelhouse a little bit more at least for my tastes so like yeah. that IPA, um, he dry hopped the hell out of it, and it was like sharp and green, and I wasn't expecting that from him, and it was on point. And then I, I had it like the day it was it was uh, canned, but then after a week, it was kind of just like perfection. It was really really good. The other one from that release was the uh, Eloge de Lanteur, the the saison, but aged in yes. bread barrel. So I'd had that, that was, one a bunch of times. That was oof. it yeah. cut the way the phenolic stuff. Farmhouse without phenols to me are like money. Yeah, when you put bread into the mix, the bread eats up all those those f- flavor compounds, so you just end up with that that more dusty thing. So that, I think that's why you end up liking bread beers more than you do like classic saisons. But yeah, that one was on point, man. That one was almost like it was it was basically like a step up from say, um, saison bread, which um, was the Trois Muscatel ones we were talking about. This one uh, very like kind of a similar idea that like tart bready season absolutely awesome for myself i only got my hands i think on proximity which was their collab yes. brew with kanawagi brewing company i liked it it was it was a, a nice hazy boy it was a i like this batch that came out this year better than the previous one mm-hmm. it uh, hit all those good marks that a hazy boy needs to have i enjoyed it very much actually 
So uh, yeah. cheers to uh, Charlie. Yes. yes. Charlie, man. Well For done, guys. Killed it. Our top 10. Yeah. Yes. The second brewery, we're going to keep sipping this beer for uh, for the next one before we crack another one. So just looking down the list, once again, this is all completely at random. Should we talk about uh, Masorum Brassatorium? Let's do it. Sure. Who are they? The Kings. The Kings. Who are they? Just imagine Just imagine that they're a year and a half old, you know? Yeah. And they're just <laughs> uh, dominating. i uh, super proud of the boys. I had them on the podcast earlier this year. Uh, I, I think you had them on too, Matty, didn't you? I had a chat with them right before their one-year anniversary party. Yeah, stunning. I feel like their artwork's got even better. Yeah, so people who got oh, yeah. the Sorum uh, were like arguably, I guess alongside another brewery that we're going to talk about, um, they were like the haze gods of, of Montreal specifically. They really were the ones that pioneered it, that, that put their reputation that this is what we do. We make, you know, New England IPAs predominantly alongside, you know, some amazing lagers, um, some imperial stouts and they even moved into like saison and sort of farmhouse stuff like barrel age things so and then of course they're they, hitting, hitting some pilsners now too yep yep exactly the the pills and then on top of that the smoothie sale was their uh, petit jus mm-hmm. de mort which is phenomenal but they i feel like they were they came out swinging in 2019 matt they were in our top 10 obviously because it was they changed the game here i feel like b- between masorum and the, probably the next brew we'll talk about absolutely they, that's where i met noah at <laughs> masorum sure. Yeah, we ran into each other. Oh, yeah, because you had the kids and shit, yeah? Exactly. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, dad life. Yeah, so... Um, <laughs> yeah, I just feel like Masorum, like, you know, they are, I feel like their whole thing was on point from the beginning, from their branding to the the way, you know, the can art, the merch yeah. was fire, the launches, um, even, even just the way that the, the tap, the color of the tap handles and the little accents in the brewery matched the color of the water tower behind it. Everything is calculated. It's just so well executed. So in 2020, um, I feel like they kind of took it to another level. They, I, I, they were the second. I did my little thing on Untapped, and they were. The, I had more. I think the second most breweries, the second most beers that I had were from Missouri. Nice. Um, as far as different ones, which really surprised me, but I think it was because I went there m- numerous times right before the lockdown and we did the podcast and I went there like per year two or three four times yeah, but then when you go there too they have 13 different totally different yeah, beers so every I'm, time you get so. like half pours of everything and you're good to go but um, I, you know I felt like this year if I'm honest I felt like they had a few maybe not misses but beers that I didn't love whereas like last year I felt like I loved more but the volume that they're pumping out I mean come on like you know everything can't be like A1 yeah, exactly. And I mean, they did the, the smoothie thing this year. Or was that? Yeah, I think that was this year. That was this year. And they even yeah. did the, um, they did slushies, actual, like, people call them yes. slushy sours, but they're just smoothies. But they actually right. had, like, um, you know, 7-Eleven Slurpee in Australia, we call them machine. So, yeah, yeah, that's they, a lot of fun. Wrong. And also, they really dived into the, the pastry set thing because, or just as in general, because bef- I'd say a year, was it a year ago that they released their first bourbon barrel aged imperial stout um and that one was pastry-esque but it it it, it was a nothing like the um the, the buck canada ones it was good actually um i was surprised with how like balanced and clean it was um but i've had the chance to try um he was particularly excited to give me this one and when i had it um this is a uh, cremation and it's 10% Imperial Stout with coconut vanilla. Is that a 500 ml bottle? No, it's a 375. Oh, that's even better. Yeah. Good for them. So that's smart. I didn't know that. they were doing that. That's great. Um, so he was particularly excited for me to try that one. So when I got it, um, I was kind of taken back because I feel like no one's even come close to what Bon Canada does with their pastries. Um, but this one was there. Like it was, it was thick and, and, and viscous, but not cloying it was like that it was that great balance it was really something nice i feel like that's they've improved on that and uh, for the haze yeah i feel like some of them were are better than others for my tastes um but what i do find interesting is like i have a neighbor who's um into beer but you know not not a total noob but like he just he just likes it you know what i mean and he knows styles and stuff but he's not he's not isn't nerd out like us and he actually always ended up preferring the ones that I liked a little bit less. So it's like the fact that they're doing different types of IPAs and taking different techniques, they're going to appeal to different people and, and their different tastes, you know? So it's cool, I think. 
Very cool. And they also got barrels this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they got that new section. Which is brand new, too. So so they're, they're doing all that stuff, aging stuff in gin barrels. Very interesting. Uh, they're, they're still, you know, the Montreal Kings, they, they're they they're slaying. The, 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 the releases sell out in minutes. Yeah. It leads yeah. to very, very angry people in the craft <laughs> beer scene. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Even I tried But I think to... that they also handled that well. Yeah, with grace. I think that they handled the whole pandemic handling you know the whole online sales and dealing with upset craft beer enthusiasts i think that they, they handled even that well so that that yeah. deserves a push towards the positive too oh for sure i agree i, I feel like people are way too um harsh on breweries like Masorum and bar canada because of the, how quickly it sells out i mean it's not their fault even third moon in ontario like it's not yeah. their fault that people like this shit like they didn't set out to do this they just made the best product they can and then people getting crazy upset. I think one of the problems is just the um, the trade boys. They're the problem. The ones who max out their limits and they'll go and drop four, five, six hundred dollars on the thing when I just want two four packs or something. Yeah. And I can't even get that because these other dudes are already going boom, 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 getting in beforehand. And it's sort of like, I, can you, I don't know. If you're the business, what? I'm going to stop people from giving me money. I don't know. Like, you can't really be that mad at it. People get a little entitled i think with this stuff yeah the entitlement is is a bit much people losing their minds when they they can't get through i mean it's frustrating when the entire thing falls apart like the a lot of the saq cantillon release stuff like yes those are those were like hilariously bad right because like every time they're like it's gonna work this time then the whole server crashes (laughs) whereas in like if something just manages to sell out that fast like it, all it really comes down to is who can click the button first, and it sucks, but, like, I don't know what more we could want from them. Brew more beer? Well, it doesn't really work that way. You know what I mean? They're, they are, they're brewing as much as they can. Like, it's not a... No matter how much they're going to brew, it's going to sell out. I kept, I told Vesa that no matter how much they brew, it's going to sell out. So. I can't even, like, imagine at what point they'd have to get to when they start sitting on beers. Like, I don't know. They also expanded ridiculously this year, which is totally notable to that was something we should talk about. Mm-hmm. From the first time I went there last year to what they did this year, it's three, three and a half times the size. It's very, very impressive. You yeah, the, it's yeah, very yeah, the back impressive. Yeah, yeah. And they got even got fooders. They brought them in from American Solera in um, Oklahoma. Yeah. So they yeah. did that collab with them, which was great as well. But then, you know, they brought in that. So they just... They're the most, and we joke about this word, but they're the most innovative, arguably. They're probably the top, well, not probably, they are the top two, in the top two of most innovative breweries, I think, in Quebec as far as the way they're approached it. But I always find that interesting when you talk about innovation, and I don't think we've talked about this before, and we don't have to harp on it because I know we have to move on. But I feel like when you talk about innovation, it's always innovation in related, like related to what's trending. But when you look at like Dunham, someone like Dunham, they've been innovating like insane for years you know what i mean different ballasts they were like the first ones to like start doing blends like no one did that before right mm-hmm. where they took their like leo's breakfast ipa put it in this barrel and then their saison on a stick put it in this barrel and then blend them with a with a particular yeast strain and then it becomes this big thing so i feel like there's innovation across the board it's just what what Masorum and like buck canada is there i mean they're they're doing what's innovating what's popular correct and arguably, I mean, are they really innovating that much or are they just kind of doing what everyone in the States is doing? I mean, I don't know. Sorry, I don't mean to criticize. It's more that's like... A, that's, a fair, that's a fair criticism, though. Brewski on the... Well, we'll talk about them later. Yeah. Like, he's just going wild. <laughs> right. But I feel like it's almost... Every, we all have, like, an agenda with using that word. When I say right. it, I say it to piss off the purists intentionally. I don't really... I, I do appreciate innovation, but the people who get mad at smoothie sours, and then I'll go, yeah, I want the blue one, the one that looks green. I'll think, I'm the slime beer. Give it to me. I want that shit, because it makes Chris from Hubs and Bros mad. I'm like, fuck you. Yeah, let's make you mad. I'm like... I just think it's fun making Chris mad. I don't get mad at other people's beer and people get mad at the fun stuff like shut up stop it and the, the breweries that are making the funnest shit have dominated this year let's be real like like yeah, we already mentioned no but I guess we might as well talk about that before we go to the next one we'll talk about Brewski and then we'll go to the next beer sure yeah that sounds good yeah let's do it I'm enjoying drinking this uh, this crispy boy right here fuck it that was good so yeah, no, you had to say something about Brewski before, but Pub Brewski, also in Montreal, uh, they took their innovation to a whole other world this year, 
they opened up their um, uh, in-house, uh, their brew house in, inside their, their large new tap room. Uh, I think it was uh, September last year, uh, two months after Misorum. Um, we had them on the podcast. They, they kicked out the first one we did this year, actually. And uh, their stuff went, the stuff was always good. And as soon as they got their equipment, it just went from like zero to a thousand. It was just like the the quickness with how good it got was insane. And absolutely, I've never seen anything like it before. The funny thing was when we had them on the podcast earlier this year, I think they were working on their series called Brew Juice, which are the smoothie sours. And I don't know who did it first, if it was Masorum or Brewski. I think Derek thinks, pretty sure that they did it first. I'm pretty sure they did too. But I think it was, it was close-ish. No one invented it. It obviously took it from the States, like you were saying. Yeah. But that Brew Juice series, like you were saying, how crazy they went. If you want to talk about innovation, this shit is, like, out of control. And even the most... Even someone who typically makes fun of the trends, like Uncle Noah right here, we're all team smoothies. <laughs> no, you, you, you actually don't. You're actually pretty good. There's other people who do. No, I always absolutely. give you shit about it, but you really don't. You're actually really into everything. So i got to give you that respect. Top two in Montreal as far as like the output, the 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 quality, the genuine innovation. No, not making fun of it. As in like they're just doing the weirdest, craziest, funnest stuff you've ever heard of. Like raspberry, cheesecake. strawberry, cheesecake, brew, yeah. brew cake. They, they put cream cheese in the fucking beer, man. Like, and it's, I had it last night. Again, it's fire. And I've, I've been sitting on these for a while and they're, they're sitting good. Yeah, and I think when it was such an awesome chat with Derek that we had on 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 BAOS a few weeks ago, and like I think I think sometimes when when you think about these crazy ingredients, you just picture some someone doing like, well, let's, let's do cheesecake because it's silly, <laughs> and then like you're, it's like that you're making the beer and you're just like throwing it in, oh, this will be good or whatever. But like he's such like a science not, guy, yeah, you know, like and and like all these tests to see like how do i do it so that's not gonna like turn to cheese and how do it and like really just like testing 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 um and when you when you have a chat with someone like that you realize that like these gimmicky silly things takes so much effort to to turn something as kind of crazy like that as into something that's palatable and works and isn't just a complete mess that's um you know that's hard. Like it's it's hard to make a good pilsner, right? Because it's a it's a it's such a clean beer that you can't hide anything in. But I think it's probably also pretty hard to make a solid cream cheese fucking beer, right? <laughs> like how the hell do you do like? <sighs> did, did they kill guys... it all across the board too. You know, all styles. Like every single thing they do from. They do like standard blondes and Hefeweizens in the in the, the brew pub for the you know the, they're in the old port they have to cater to everyone. Their pastry stouts are insane. That mac uh, macadam we had the other night was like yeah it was pretty good. Man, I got fucked up after that podcast. That was rough. Um, <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> they uh, the the lagers like the crispy boys are fire. Um, I obviously they haze. Oh, I only had like one or two at the brewery itself, and exactly what you'd expect. Like they don't slip anywhere they're the one of the most consistent breweries across styles that i've ever come across and yeah, then, that pineapple double ipa that we shared that night that was mm, excellent wow. yeah that was actually really 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 and good. i don't like fruit in my ipas generally speaking you and that not. was just on point do you guys have a favorite beer you had from uh I, I think we should actually answer this for every every brewery now do you have a favorite beer you guys had this year from from them uh for me uh i haven't had a ton of brewski so I had a, like a four pack from them a few months ago, and then I tasted a couple things actually with with the two of you the last time we were all together in one place. I guess we yeah, did. It was very late at night. Peter Peter showed up <laughs> with like a four pack. Of, oh yeah, of sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was actually I you just we went floored. I was like, what? No, no. Um, and then I and then he brought uh, a truckload of beer to our houses a few weeks ago, and uh, of all of those, there was a smoothie that had mint in it that just blew my mind it was it was black currant mint and mango which is a combination that i would have not uh, it shouldn't work on paper thought of. yeah i was yeah, like this is gonna be this is gonna be the worst smoothie of the bunch <laughs> yeah or at least was, the one that's gonna just be like okay you did it to do it yeah yeah um 
I'll let it like explode. The, the, <laughs> but when you're dealing with 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 absolutely fresh ingredients, it's like I guess it's just a different world, right? Because when you think mint, mint, you think toothpaste, you think mint candies. That's really abrasive. You don't necessarily, but like right before I cracked it, I was like, oh wait, this might work. Because you think about a, a mimosa, not a mimosa. What's the one where you mash mint and raspberries? A mojito. A mojito. That's like the most delicious drink, right? You're mashing all that fresh mint in there with the raspberries, so like the citrus just it doesn't clash at all with the mint. So it had a, you know, it was it was cassis and mango, so obviously it didn't taste like raspberry. But like if you can imagine how, um, what what, what is it again? <laughs> the uh, a, a, a mojito. A mojito. <laughs> God, how how well a mojito works? Well, this worked equally well. So that was mine. Awesome. I had their. There was a pina colada smoothie, and I drank it on my two-year anniversary episode with all of the Cryptopsy singers, and I had picked beers to go with each singer, a brew that made me think of them, and, and <laughs> Marte Lacroix was so insulted that I chose a pina colada <laughs> brew for him, and I was like, no, but it's so creative, and you're an artist, because he's a tattoo artist, right. and he's amazing, and then, uh, he likes to draw, and he's like a painter, he's amazing, he does a cover art for her for bands such as Gorguts, and he was so insulted, but it was delicious. And Did he like it in the end? <laughs> we were doing it like oh, this, okay. sadly, so I tasted it in honor of him. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I had the experimental version of that, which is which the that's one, what I had. You had exactly the one with like marshmallow. That. Yeah, that was really yes, good. Yes, exactly that one. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> the most interesting one was uh, we had a crowler of the caramel apple uh, smoothie brew juice, and that one tasted like baby food. Like you, yeah. have, you have that baby food type of thing. Like yeah. it, it had that, but it would just, it worked in a way that I was so I was so surprised how well it worked. But otherwise, it's that that raspberry cheesecake was just insane. Oh yeah, that was one for you. Like yeah, I had it last night. I did a one minute review of it because I was like I have to. I was waiting till I had t- a bandwidth to drink an eight point five percent smoothie sour because these things give me hangovers, bro. Like I think it's the sugar, and then they they mess with my guts the next day as well. They are great hangover cures. That's kind of what I think. I swear both of you had said something about that to me. Yeah. Before. Yeah. So I think I need to try that as like a thing. But um, yeah, they, they they were Brewski knocked it out of the park this year. I think they really deserve. Yeah. And their IPAs are on point. Seriously. All the IPAs. And we're only just talking about the fun fruited stuff. Yeah. IPA, I couldn't Not really only, just think. solid IPAs. They're all as, you know, up there with anything uh, in the province as far as Hayes is concerned, for sure. Yeah, I'm very cool. Very impressed. Up next, uh, this brewery is my personal MVP of Quebec uh, for 2020. As far as I keep saying that, but uh, best new brewery say that's what I wanted. I, these guys they killed it they at killed the beginning it. of the pandemic. Pretty tough times. Um, I feel like there's a little bit of bias from both of us because one of our good friends Chris from Hops and Bros works there No, and Noah has known the owner for a long time actually even did his new logo which we'll talk about Yeah. but uh, Elma Quebec's Sankey and Baron mate I, I can't speak uh, highly enough about these guys I'm not biased whatsoever I have I have no connection to this brewery and they would they absolutely made my list because and I've I've only been able to get their brews recently because they they came through La Canette, my favorite local yes. craft beer store here in Gilray, Kevin. Montreal, just 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 recently. So so, but everything that I've had from them has just been amazing. And and it's not and it's one, another one of these breweries. We're not just picking it because it's 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 because they're just making haze or that they're just making uh, pastry stouts. That they can nail a bunch of styles of brews, which is very very impressive for me. And I think that's important. Oh man, the nose on this. Um, we didn't even talk about what this is. This is a collab yes. with one of the greatest breweries I believe in the U.S. This is Foam from Burlington, Vermont, the place I miss more than my home of Australia. Well, this is my home, but I miss Australia because we haven't been able to go back this year. But we go to Vermont regularly. And the fact that they collab with Foam is insane to me. I can't believe they, they pulled this off. This is the coolest shit in the middle. I know, the only again, thing is, again. So young to pull that off, you know? Like, who is collabing with Foam this level in the game? Are you ready? Well, I think Jacob had... Um, so Jacob's been... It was, was a huge beer nerd, right? Like, he was on the trade forums. He was getting, like fire for all over the world so i think he was a very like a real regular there at uh at foam so i think he got to know them a little bit 
And then when he was opening, I think he, he went to them for a lot of advice. Okay, so, okay, okay. Um, and, and Jacob seems to be like the collab guy, right? Like that he loves collabs. Like half, I feel like half the beers at Sangin Bagan have been collabs. No joke. Um, so it only made sense for him to reach out to them. And then they actually shipped, uh, I believe, malts and hops to him. Oh, uh, really? So that they could brew the beer, and then the the foam version of this comes out in a couple of weeks. Very cool, very cool. Well, that's smart though. If you can do that, if you're a young brewery, and can team up with big boys right away, get those collabs going for sure. Stamp of approval off the rip, and you get more and more people talking about you. You're tagged in both things. Genius idea. How it's crazy is the like nose on this? Eh? That oh my god, dude! That, that that tank. I love it. What would you? Um, uh, I feel like I'm getting there's some serious fruits in this. Like this was like very uh, aromatic, like insanely aromatic. Super papaya. Oh, it's not sharp at all. It has like no like greeny astringency. It's god. just like smooth. This is insane. This was as good as sweet, I thought it was going to be. But it's not overly sweet. No. You know? it's, it's wow. 8%. Even the name of it delicious. is called Postal Service, and I didn't think about it until right now exactly why it's called that. I love that. Everything about Sankey and Baron, and this is probably a good point. Oh, yeah. right, because uh, of them shipping the... the exactly. Because yeah. yeah, really cool. they couldn't just, go there. I said, to, I said to Chris, I was like, yo, did they send you some beers? And he's like, nah, they didn't send beers. They just sent the fucking ingredients. I'm like, damn it. Um, cause foam, every single time I go to Burlington, we just go to foam. Like I've never interviewed them. I've reached out once. I think it just didn't work out, but I don't care. It's just my favorite place. I love it so much. The tap room is amazing. It's in a beautiful spot. It's always packed. It's just, it's, it, I don't know. It's Vermont to me. It's one of the, my favorite things. And this reminds me of foam. I wonder if they didn't, they didn't send yeast, but I feel like now in hindsight, I can see the, um, the inspiration from foam for, for Jacob, you know? For sure. Oh, this is gorgeous, bro. This is insane. So without, like, spending too much time on second on Bell, I'll, I'll just say my little tiny piece on them. Um, mm-hmm. So what what I love about them, and, you know, we talked about this on, on the podcast that when we had them on, is that they're, they're, they're kind of focusing on what's um, popular in the sense of a lot of hazy IPAs, but with that... A lot of cla- like classic and interesting stuff in between. Um, so, you know, he did like a classic breakfast style imperial stout um, that's it's just so good. So good. Um, a, a few sours, some some like simple gozes, um, a lot of lagers, which is fun. Like a ton of different lagers and stuff too. So, and and, it, and they nail everything across the board. Um, and then, of course. I um, did a collaboration with them called Hoptism, um, which was an IPA that was hopped with Galaxy and Nelson Sauvain. And um, I didn't have much to do with its brewing, pro- uh, how it was made, but man, it was fucking good. <laughs> um, how easy was that conversation to get that brew made, Noah? Uh, quite easy. Quite easy. It was... Um, he told me, uh, we're going to have to do an IPA if we want to get it out soon. I'm like, that's fine. I'm like, do you have any Galaxy? He's like, yep. Do you have any Nelson? He's like, yep. I'm like, all right. <laughs> do it. <laughs> By the way, that was in my top five beers. Aside from, in my, I have a, we did a, me and Nate, Nate from Nathan Does Beer, did a separate uh, blog post for BAOS with our like, top five breweries, top five beers. And uh, this was in my top five and Hopism, no bias. Like, Aww. it was just one of the best beers. And also, I... um. The Vox and Hops beer as well, Vox and No Hop. We'll talk about that after. But that Hopism was, was like the too. way that they hopped and they used the Galaxy. It didn't overpower the Nelson for the first time in the history yeah. of using Galaxy. It was just such an exquisite beer. It was exceptional. Like they went everything. I'm just looking at this. Like I'm not it's drunk gorgeous. obviously because I've only one beer in, but this is just like it's a work of art. There's something about uh. it. It's just be- maybe because it's foam and I'm like a bit nostalgic and I've been upset all year. And <laughs> no, I'm this going is. <laughs> This might be the, the well, I think this is the best double they've done. This might be one of the best IPAs they've done. <laughs> Except not hopism. I mean, come on. Obviously not. <laughs> that was 7%, so it's not a double. Right. This, that trying 1% to, makes it all, all, all over <laughs> it's, it's a little bit different than Broken Q, which yeah. is up at the same ABV. Yeah, yes. Broken Q is a little bit sweeter, even exactly. though they, they, they tapered it down in the last batch. Um, but this is, uh, this is, whew. this is special. You do not get that eight percent at all. I pro- if this was blind, I probably wouldn't have guessed the eight. 
No, not at all. No, oh no, no, gosh. there's no ethanol going on there at all. Um, Matt, do you have any thoughts on uh, Sankiyam? Being that you don't have any, um, <laughs> I'm not biased. I'm not connected to them whatsoever. I, I I saw all the hype building throughout the year. I keep wondering what the hell is going on in Gatineau. <laughs> <laughs> There's something the going hell? on there. Bro. Is it the water? Like, like there's always that joke. It's the water, but like, water is one of the main exactly. ingredients in a beer. So, know? so, so maybe, maybe I don't know. But uh, the mindset behind it's really cool. The branding is spot on. All of the labels look amazing. Uh, the beers. Once I started tasting them, I was immediately hooked. I, I think that you know that the, the future is very bright for San Cambado, and I can only just wait to see what happens in 2021. Yes. Man, could not agree more. Um, I didn't know anything about them. I actually didn't know about Noah's connection to Jacob um, prior to Hopism, really. Like, you didn't, I, no one like talked about that. I just knew that my friend Chris was working there. So immediately, whoever he worked for was kind of partial to. He was excited about it, even though me and him disagree a lot about things. Like, th- these guys have just, like, basically what, what Noah said, They every single style they do, knock it out the park from the crispies the stouts the the haze obviously um they even did some um i don't know if you mentioned like they did like fruit of gozes early on yep. um you said that okay um uh, i kind of think of oh they did like the pastry stout we had that the other night with i had it the other night when we did the podcast with uh, emily from like La, La Petit Pierre. but like the branding the consistency of their merch game the way they promote the beers just with, say, like this little design without the text and stuff is yeah, just smart. It's gorgeous. The full package. Bro, like, it's yeah. a full package. For a new brewery to come out this good with the beers this good, with the branding this good, with social media that good, um, I just, yeah, these guys, no one came near it as far, particularly a new brewery. Like, it's like six to eight months old. I think it was April or May, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's just it's unheard of that a new brewery is this this quality across the board. So um, I am like as Noah's like like to say on their deck, really yeah, on their deck, on the, <laughs> really on the deck. <laughs> say 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 it real say it real slow for me. You're just you're just on their dick. <laughs> no, you have you have to extend it the way you did it the first. I was like on their deck. <laughs> <laughs> it, was so good. it was good. I'm firmly on their dick. No pause. It was, uh, yeah. They're just an exceptional brewery, and I'm really proud of them. And I, I, I want them to dominate. They just have a great attitude. Jacob is a hip hop head like me, and most breweries are metalheads like you, Maddie. So Jacob, That's did, right. uh, yeah. So Jacob did a beer called Five Mics for like it's a. If you know, you know what that means. Like that is a big, and he even used the logo with the microphone. Like it's. You know, I like that he represents that. He even does things like make the playlist to go with the beers and stuff. I mean, like it's, yeah, it's super cool. The Spotify thing on the side of the can, yeah, it's amazing. Man. And they and they're just so thoughtful with every single thing they do. They did they, they were one of three breweries in Quebec to do the Black is Beautiful. We actually have all three of those breweries in our top ten, which I'm was not intentional, um, which but makes me very That's happy. Great. Um, they you know really care about diversity and inclusion and equity in the industry. They work with local. They really hyper local. They like you were saying. Every it feels like every beer they collab with a bakery or that clandestine company or like they did this one with this dude who makes these crazy like uh, sausages, all these meat like cured meats and stuff. Who's a, a you know a black dude as well, which is sick. They're just supporting all these businesses. They have these small businesses turn up to their launches that are from. They're not just a you know. They just they're just so thoughtful across the board. I can't say enough. I'm going to gush too much, but. Yeah, <laughs> I love them. I love them so much. I'm really proud of them, and I wish them all the success. That's exciting. Yeah, man. That's exciting. Yeah. You're on the day. As no, I'm on their day. <laughs> um, so shall we so move on? So what's next? Really, so the next one, I'm just, I'm just literally, this list was, was sort of random, so I'm going to continue mm-hmm. the randomness of ones we haven't talked about. How about we talk about uh, Sir John? Hell sure. yes. So these guys, another young brewery, another, another young. How young old brewery. are they? Do you guys know, Matt? I think, I think uh, they got the first distribution, December of 2019. That's when they started. They, that's when I stumbled across their first brews. I think the first brews I stumbled across was an early Jericho, and uh, oh, the oat cream one. The, the name is escaping my Yeah, I my think mind. I tried them for the first time with you, Matt. And I brought yeah. some, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I hit them did. up very, very, very early. Yeah. I brought that was them January. That bottle share. 
Yeah. That was in January, but I had stumbled across them before that. Just interesting, another branding spot on, attacking, you know, just all the hype styles, uh, nonstop releases, uh, dancing through a pandemic, you know, instead of just instead of having stuff go into kegs and serving it at their pub, just pumping out more distribution. I had them on the podcast. They were super cool. Uh, shout out to Joel and Max. And they they sent me this picture for my episode artwork, and they did a goddamn photo shoot. Really? And they were metal really? as fuck, even though they're not metal as fuck. They're a little bit metal as fuck, but they're not that metal as fuck. But they did <laughs> a photo shoot <laughs> for my episode artwork, and I wrote them right away. I was like, this is why your beer is so good. You don't half-ass anything. anything. <laughs> and, and that's the truth. So... You know, from you know, Jericho is is their their flagship. It's cool that they have a flagship because nobody does that shit anymore. Yeah, yeah. So you know, um, probably taking from the book uh, of Buck Canada with Hipa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's probably where they got that inspiration. And they did the chapter, fucking, fucking around with, yeah. fucking around with the hops, basically. Yes, they call chapters, think, uh, which is cool. Which I think would sort of help, you know, Brewski in that sta- stage, in stage, because you know they've done so many, so much haze, but there's no like one that has we can even name was the right. one. Except right. Avena is the only one they keep bringing back, which is their uh, own cream IPA, and they keep changing there the hops. Go, yeah. But that's the only one that they continue to do. Everything else seems to be like a random, like, hey, let's do this and put it out under this name and so on and so forth. Because everything changes all the time in this modern day of brewing. So, so Sir John is just killing it killing it killing it uh, i went there during the late summer it was it was amazing first time actually being there i had spoken to them via social media a hundred times but it was great wish that i can get my more more of them more and i want more sir john's more distribution <laughs> coming through 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 more places i know that they've they've it's getting better made the brewery bigger they've made the brewery bigger they're doing that right now so they will get more distribution and that excites me very much yeah they get it at the uh my local dep in Vaudreuil. Which really? Is good, yeah, but he she tries hard. He 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 like really tries hard to get everything. Yeah, um, for me, like what one one of the the first time I heard about them. So I, I, I I'm I'm friendly with Gabriel, who's the um, uh, head brewer at Boreal. Um, got to know each <laughs> other uh, when he first started his episode program, which was the birth of Nagest and all that. Anyway, he early on with, went and did a collab with Sir John and he was telling, and this was before I tried anything. He was saying like, Oh, these guys are, are making the best haze in the province. And I was like, Oh, Gabriel knows his shit. Like he's a good brewer. And, um, so I was like, Oh, okay. Wow. Um, I have to say personally, when I find Sir John a touch astringent, but when they nail it, they really nail it. Um, I've had a lot. I've had, I don't know, a handful of their stuff. I always try and buy it when I can. Um, there's a certain sharpness to their beers. I don't know if it's like a heavy wheat component that gives it that like almost like slight astringency to it. I don't know. It's like, like it's almost like a hop burn, but I don't think it's hops. I don't know what it is, but it's like a it's like a fun um sharpness to their beers and uh i uh most of what i've had from them i've enjoyed i haven't had too much other uh, too many other stouts i think i've had one and i have one in the in the cellar that a pastry a cookie pastry thing that i got a couple weeks ago that i'm excited to try but yeah they're 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 solid they were on they were uh, i don't know if they were on my trying to remember if they're on my top 10 or my extended top 10 but um, they were your extended yeah but uh, they're uh, they're doing some amazing stuff. Yeah, they they genuinely are. Uh, Tiff and I actually got a chance to go out there um, uh, earlier. I think it was the day, the same day. I went to Saint Kiem Baron. It was in like August or something, once or July, once the numbers had gone down for cases. So we hadn't been anywhere in months and months and months and months and months. So I went. To, we were on the way. And we were driving. And said, "Let's shoot." I was like, "Yo, Tiff, check where Sir John is." And she checked, and it was that exit. So I was like, yo, pull in. And I know they were going to send me the Black is Beautiful beer because they were the second brewery in Quebec to do the Black is Beautiful. Uh, Sankey M were the third, and we'll talk about the first later. Um, so I went in there and I met up with the uh, social media manager. I, I, I think her name's Shannon, if I'm not mistaken. Shannon. Shannon. Yeah. She was great. So she's, she just pulled him out of the box. It had the whole thing. She was like, well, instead of shipping it to you, like I'll just here take it. 
Um, and I bought a couple a couple four packs and was extremely impressed. One of them was the Jericho, which I hadn't had before. It's chapter eleven, Chapit Ong, so I got. Um, in saying Noah, you are correct in that they are. Um, yeah, I had them in my top ten as well. So I was super impressed with them this year. I wish I, I tried more. I uh, didn't have a huge need to purchase a lot of beer, so I didn't really try as much as I normally uh, probably would. But um, everything I had from them was was fire. Their black is beautiful. Was was fantastic. A great pastry stout. Um, I don't remember exact ingredients, but it was great. All the haze I had was was really solid. Uh, I was actually speaking to Derek because Derek from Brewski did a collab with them. I'm not sure when. Maybe it was. I don't know if it's come out. We'll have that. I have not seen that yet. I would have been excited about it. Okay, so I so am excited about it now. <laughs> maybe I fucked up uh, and said something <laughs> I shouldn't have. Either way, I'll stop talking about that because maybe that's another thing. But yeah, they are doing a bunch of collabs, which is really cool. Doing a they bunch. did one for uh, the the beer store up on the North Shore, Espace Blanc. Espace Blanc. Okay, yeah, Chris talked about those joints. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like they they're doing some great stuff. Either way, yeah, I, everything I've had from them, I've been very very impressed. I'm excited to see what they're going to do in uh, 2021 for real. Absolutely, and they were on our honorable mentions last year. They were. Because I, they were because I had just just had those early ones, and I was like, "What is this? This is new. Yep. This is Masorum esque." When, when when I went to Masorum and had my chat for their one year anniversary episode, he he, uh, he totally told me that that Sir that Sir John had come and visited them before they opened to 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 see what was going on. And so he was he was basically saying that they were, didn't they do what they did a club with Masorum, right? I feel I like they did. did. Am I crazy? They did Buck Canada, right? They did Buck Canada recently. The, the Maybe that's what I'm thinking of, which is so cool. So all, all the, um, uh, you know, all, all the best breweries keep collaborating with each other, and it makes me so happy, like yeah. particularly in, within Quebec. It is what Quebec. it should be. There's no competition. It's, yeah. it's just a team working together to, yep. to make more and more people drink craft beer. Preach. There's still a bunch of people out there that drink shitty beer, and that's okay. You can do that if you if that's what you want to do. No. But, but you could you could also drink <laughs> great craft beer. Drink good beer, Matthew. I don't give anyone you can af- If you can afford it, drink good beer. Never. Up next... This is a brewery. I've known oh, these guys yeah. since Ontario for since they were brewing out of there. Um, I actually can't remember how I met them. Overhop. I think that were they in our uh, honorable mentions last year, or they made the top ten? I, they were in the top ten, I think. Okay, they they keep uh, they keep killing it. And this year, I feel like it's gone to a whole new level. This is uh, the one we're drinking tonight. It's called Dark Hop. It is their black IPA, which is a style that is uh, few and far between. Yeah, that's why I was so excited to choose this one. Yeah, I was happy you did know it because I was like, why did you want to put it now? And you were like, yo, it'll separate the, the haze from the the next beer we're going to do. And I thought that was really smart. But yeah, look, so Paddy and Tatiana from uh, Brazil, from Rio, um, they moved out to Canada like four or five years ago. Overhop is a brewery that is actually uh, based in Brazil. Uh, their friends own it. Uh, shouts to um, Rodrigo. He came through. who's actually on the podcast a while ago. He can barely speak English and he held it down. He's a fucking G. Um, and they, uh, oh, I'm actually going to get Tiff to take photos of these. And, um, basically they were using their recipe. So they made a separate company. So there's Overhop in Brazil and there's Overhop Canada. They made a whole other company. And, uh, now the, uh, so Tati and Patty and the other part, Tati's husband, I'm sorry, Patty's husband, Ricardo, who is also a G, they opened up their own brewery in uh, April, I believe in St. Jean sur Richelieu near Lagabia. Um, hell yes. They, I'm so happy for them. It was such a nightmare for them to get the funding and to get the place and to get all the permits and to do all the different things. They hustled. They're such hustlers. I love them so much. Even on, you know, it was Patty's birthday when she came and dropped this off to all of us as well. That's how kind she is. I can't express how much I, I have. Like, a, you know, there's some people in beer you become really good friends with. Like, the, aside from all that, beer media. I'll go next one, babe. The beer media boys and stuff like we've really gotten close because we help each other out. We work together a lot, and it's been honestly my favorite thing in 2020. That's a whole another conversation. But the the way that these guys they're just the loveliest humans. Name one person who hasn't said a nice thing. Who knows these girls? I I met them thanks to you at Chambly last year in 2019, and it was like immediate. My favorite humans, right? Patty just right away hugs. Oh yeah, you know, just right away. It was just awesome, immediate kin- kinship. I've loved their brews since the beginning. Since they, I, I actually discovered them because of you, Craig. Because Good. of my early beer mail, 
the video, I'm like, who is this Australian dude <laughs> drinking, <laughs> drinking these Brazilian Brazilian beers <laughs> in Toronto? My, like, what the fuck? My, who, who, my mind was very confused. None of it makes it like a hip hop persona. Them, and then I saw them at my grocery store, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna buy it. I, I'm biting. And I think one of the first ones I picked up was 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 Hopman. Ah, and, and okay. The, the can art so cool. Can is dope. All of their can art is All dope. It's it. something that that like, they immediately is. they hit the mark. Every time with sick, sick can art, and uh, well, it's so I metal, loved it. I right? loved it. Yes, but Brazil loves metal. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so as it was going throughout the years, I just enjoying, enjoying everything. And now, once I finally got my hands on their new brews from from Gabriel Peron, their 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 new head brewer, just killing it. The early, I got actually a crazy story. I interviewed Paolo Jr. from from Sepultura, who was a huge Brazilian metal band, and I wrote Patty, and I was like, it'd be really cool if I could drink some Overhop during this interview. Right. She sent over <laughs> way too much beer <laughs> for this interview, including two growlers straight, straight from the fermenters <laughs> of an early version of the New Hazy and uh, their passion fruit beer, which I love so much, the sour one. That was a collab with Mason's. I should remember this. Crisp, Cripster, 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 delicious, yes. delicious. It was so, so good, so good. It's, it's, and, and no, no fault to Ashlag, but it's night and, and day, day. Yeah. night and day. So, just for people who don't know what Matt's talking about, they contract brewed out of uh, Ashlag for many years. They were actually based in Toronto when I met them, and they were contracting out of a, diff- a few different places. I think Common Good did some of their stuff, and then now they're. I'm not, I think. Well, when I say now, the last time I asked them, they were still brewing out of Equals in London, Ontario. I think they're done, from what I've heard. I think they kind of had enough with Ontario, and they've just embraced Quebec. They like being here, and at first, uh, Tati moved here, and they were going to split up, and then uh, I think uh, Ricardo got a job here, and they were like, fuck it, and they moved out to Chambly, and they just based there. Beer beer has dictated their life. It's amazing. They they, they home brewers that that go to to Monzial, to show off their their very hybrid early hazy back in 2016 when nobody was making hazies. Yeah. Win the gold, get invited to Monzial, meet Ushlag, meet Shelton all on that trip, end up moving to Toronto. Ricardo gets the job in Montreal. They move here and then, you know, they get the funding, they have their own it's it's insane. Yeah. They they just like their their story as a fellow immigrant I can, I just really relate to their struggle. It was really difficult for us early on and shit. Um, and, and it's tougher than you think moving. And I moved from a privileged ass first world Western country to another privileged first world Western country. They came from Brazil where it's different. There's actual racism, uh, you know, for, for people from Hispanic descent. Um, you know, the beer scene wasn't friendly to them at first. They were calling, they, they, people were saying ridiculous things. They were, they were sexist. They were misogynist. They would come up to Tati like, oh, I'm going to put a good word to you, uh, to your boss for you. And she's the, the boss of the fucking con- company. She's a pretty 30 year old or something like that. And she, you know, people were con- you know, patronizing her at festivals and stuff. Like, don't know, it's going to Ricardo when Ricardo is a co-owner of the company, but he's Patricia's husband. And he doesn't work full time for Overhop. The girls do. They run the company. There's a female, you know, by POC company. And I, 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 I'm so I'm just so proud of them because it's it's so hard. They've got you know, they speak three languages, like yeah. you know, and they probably speak English the least. So when we come through, they're probably just like fuck. I have to talk to these guys in English now, like <laughs> they, you know. And they've been they've had to go through contract brewing. They've told me some of the the horror stories with their contracting that you know hadn't worked out. They finally got their own place. We were actually documenting doing a series, a podcast series called Building the Brewery. And um, we did the first episode right when COVID hit. Because the day we did it, they were getting the, uh, there was all these lines cut in the ground for the um, the piping. The drains. The drains. Oh, and yeah. then we were supposed to come back every month for four months and do a full podcast series. And then COVID hit. So we did the first episode and then that was it, unfortunately. And I really wanted to document it because these are our friends. Like... Like we we text Patty regularly and stuff, and 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 they're just really great human beings. And to see Hazy, I actually probably should have put it in my top beers of 2020 because that new version from their brewery compared to the contract, it's like not exaggerating when I say 10 to 20 times better than what it was contracted. It's so good. It's, it's up so there with good. with any other quality in New England. Like it was so ridiculous, I couldn't believe 
how good and they were like this is what it was always meant to be and this is unfortunately one of the problems with contract brewing when they don't want to maybe honor the way the brewery wants to 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 make it so i'm so so happy for them that they've got i haven't met the team maddie because i know you went out there and did your collab which i'd love for you to talk about yes first first, first let's let's shine a light on yes it. If Doc well, we're actually drinking from them. Yeah, I am so happy to drink a black IPA. I can't remember the fucking last time I had a black IPA. And yes, it's why that, are they not that, cool anymore? Gorgeous. Yeah, I feel like it's that like bastard not cool stepson <laughs> that no one likes or something. Like I don't know. And people love to hate on it. Um, but then there's also this like group of people that are like, we miss the black IPA. <laughs> like, would I go? Would I constantly buy one? Probably not. But um, I, I miss it. I, I enjoyed them when they're done well, and I enjoy this one. It's done well. It's subtle. It's got that, like, I don't know, there's something about that roastiness with the the more the piney hots a little bit, and that and that bitterness. Um, and the creamy bite. So much fun. So much yeah. fun in this beer. This is 7%. See, I wouldn't have, I would have never have guessed that. And it, this is a, I actually very uh, happy to know the way you planned this out because at first I was like, well, obviously by ABV, wouldn't we do this right. second and then move on to the rest? And you're like, nah, let's break up the hate. I'm like, and this is going down a tree. It's got that real, like tons of coffee on the nose, nice yeah. uh, bitter dark chocolate in the body that rests beautifully along the pine and like subtle fruits. It's, mm. it's, it's fantastic. It's a really good beer. Um, Maddie, tell us about your collab that you did with this year because this was a yeah. really, really great, great thing you did. I, I was just so stoked about it. I wrote them, and it was one of those things. No, tell them like, the story within... about what you told me. Oh, when perfect, we first perfect. met, the so, day we so met, we met, and 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 I'm like this. I'm a person that just I like to throw ideas at the wall. I'm like that. You know, I have a podcast called Vox and Hops. I like Hop Man by this brewery called called Overhop. So in my mind, I was like, one day. I'm going to do a collab beer because that's what people do, right? I've seen you guys do it. I was like aspiring to do the same thing. And I was like, you know, just I'm going to call it Vox and Overhops. So so for my two-year anniversary. It's so good. I wrote Patty and, and pitched the idea. And with, within minutes, she wrote back, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I, we're we're, we're going to push a beer for you. We have, we're, we're, I have something scheduled already. We're going to push it and we're going to do this. So... I sent over, she's like, what, what do you want for, for the name? I told her, she said, okay, let's do it. Uh, how about the, the can art? And then she pitched, how about we do like a melding of our two logos? How would you feel about it having green eyes? I was like, whatever. I'm like, a yes, let's see how it goes. Yes, yes, and. It's, it's how I do everything with the podcast. It's that improv yeah. mentality of yes, and how can we move forward? And then, you know, if it's not working down the line, we can change things. So, so they came back to me with this. Which, which, <laughs> it was this. There was no changes. It's beautiful. It was amazing. I, I sent them the the artwork that my my artist Andrew Tremblay, all these hop leaves, these hop vines. Oh, I thought I thought it was Andrew Tremblay that that uh, built that for you. So it was them that took care of that. Wow. I I sent the the hop vines to them. Right. And and, and the Valter guy, I, I'm I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, sent this back. It's amazing. It's one of the nicest labels in Quebec this year. Like he's, it's, uh, it's, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. It was like an immediate yes. I was there for the brew day. You I should very, get a tattoo very... of that. Yo, you should. <laughs> I have one tattoo. I got it when I was 16. I don't think I'm going to get any other ones. But, <laughs> They're fun. but, but someone else could get a tattoo of it and send me a picture of it. I'd like that. It's on it. <laughs> I'll get it on my left buttock. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I was there for the brew day. It was super cool. The hop choice was easy. I like Mosaic. I like Sabro. I like uh, Citra. They chose Citra from that. Patty wanted to mess around with Enigma. Gabriel, the brewer, wanted to do some Vic Secrets, so everybody just pitched in. That's great. I poured the hops in. I was there. And it, it, <laughs> Took it was, the photo. Was, that's basically what I did. But <laughs> and then the yeast did its thing, and it was amazing. I, I filmed my first reaction to it the first time I actually tasted it. That was authentic, and I loved it. Uh, it's super juicy, yet dank. Not overly sweet, 7% ABV. It was, it was amazing, and I, I was super proud of it, and uh, I would love for them to brew this again, so I hope they do. Yeah. No, I'm super proud of for that, man. I think it was a, a great look, and for me, it was just cool because it was one of the first things you told me because you knew that I was there, that were friends of mine, and you mentioned it, 
and I'm I'm big on uh, people making things happen, manifesting things, and you fucking manifested it, and it was just I don't know. I really respect it. I think it's dope because you thought of it, you want it, you went for it, you made it happen. Well, thank you. Yeah, it would have never happened without the the introduction. Look at that. And Patty sent me. Patty sent me that text feed yeah, you of it. you introducing us <laughs> when we were finally released the beer, and everybody was giving good reviews to it, and and the accolades and. It's cool, man. And she sent me that, so I sent it directly to you. Yes. It's, it's amazing. I forgot about that. But no, it was cool, man. And this is the beautiful thing about beer, right? Because it doesn't hurt anyone to connect everyone together. It's a beautiful thing to see everybody work with everybody and just make cool shit and, you know, and just win. We all come up together, rising tides and such, you know? So I, I love it. Exactly. It makes me very, exactly. very happy. I love seeing good people work together. I think it's something that uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing. So overhop. Killing it. Good they job, Overhop. It. And I need to explore started. them more this year. I'm very happy to have several cans in the fridge that I've never tried. And um, over the next few days, um, I'm going to be diving in. I'm challenging them to to expand next year. Yes, I think they more are more styles. Right? Yeah, don't don't just don't just stick to the haze. Yeah. Do something different. Bring something uh, challenging. They had the the dark sour that was super interesting this year. Mm. Super malty. I have that. I have to try uh, it. Yeah. Delicious, delicious, uh, sweet um, sour bite. Absolutely amazing. I, I want to see them to dance into some different styles, and I know that they're supposed to be getting a little bigger as well. So so let's see if I can get more of my hands onto yeah. more of them. I love it. I want to see them do their own recipes. I know they've been taking a lot from the guys in uh, in Brazil. <clears throat> exactly. Which which this is the very first of Gabriel's recipes, which is very very yeah. cool. That's promising. He's just eh? been basically following the recipes of the Brazilian overhop. So so. Thank cheers to, to Gabriel for yeah. pulling this off. I yeah, love it. It's killer. It was killer. I love it. Very very happy. All right. So what's next? Um, yep. I would yes. say Rallabok. Hell yeah. Rallabok. Has the best rep in the world. Has the best rep. Paul Andre <laughs> Mayor is one of the coolest motherfuckers we know who also is now a fellow beer media person. He has a podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're hopefully going to be, all four of us, be doing some work together out on all of our uh, respective uh, platforms next year. Um, Rallabuck was something that I, I'd heard about. And since PR became a uh, rep, basically all of us were dripping in Rallabuck afterwards because he made sure that you know the right people got their hands on it. I've had damn near more of their beers than anything else this year. Um, Same. I've been very impressed. I actually went down. They're in Saint Jean Port Jolie. They're about an hour from uh, an hour east of Quebec City. So when uh, when things were low cases in Montreal and obviously in Quebec and in um, uh, Gaspé where we went, there was basically no cases. So we decided to take a bit of a road trip. Uh, we went down. We met up with Alex at the. Uh, we went to both the actual production brewery and their brew pub. Um, with the view on the on the river, which was insane, I, I'm just really impressed with everything they do. They're they're um, they're pumping out so much beer. I don't even know how yeah. they do it. So many, and, and it's just and creative, and, and they're always different. Always, I mean, like they do everything from their barrel aged crazy stuff, barrel aged like barley wine and stouts and coffee stouts, like in the big 750s, to milkshake IPAs, Kolsch's, Pilsners. I'm just trying to picture what I had. Goza, all these different sort of fruited yeah. sours. They did, you know, double A. They're low ABV one. The Petit Vit. Petit Vit is a 2.5%. Killer. Yeah, that was really good. Killer beer. That one is a, uh, yeah, 2.5 with basically a, a, it's a nano. And the reason why it has body is because of our good friend, lactose. <laughs> uh, that shit is fire. <laughs> Noah, you love it. Stop pretending. That was definitely probably my, no, not. I was going to say definitely, probably. That is definitely my favorite low ABV beer of the year. Yeah, it was great. I, I feel like, you know, there's one I have in the fridge. I haven't got around to it because it's just been wild. But they did like a brute IPA with something else, a, a fruit or something else. Fun oh, really? Yes, I think it's it's Camarese. Camarese, okay. Which is oh, a berry I love Camarese in beer. Yeah, really I might be right. no, I'm doubting myself now that I say it. It's uh, possible. Giddyat. It's oh, Gideon. Yeah. It's, okay. it's Gideon. It's okay, the small so cherries. cherries. Cherry, cherries. Okay. Because they did another one with Cabernet's with the Razor Ramon, I think. So either way, they've just been doing a lot of fun stuff. I mean, they've got like, I like they have, uh, what's the one? It's, it's called like Saint something, like a, a stout. And then they had like, they did a cherry version of it. And then they did the barrel yeah. version. Like, I, I really enjoy that. I've had a few of their beers where I've had the OG and then a barrel aged version of it and just putting them side by side. I feel like 
whilst maybe there's no individual beer that like is totally mind blowing, their Pilsner was phenomenal. Probably my favorite. But their Kolsch was quite good. The Kolsch is I was really kind good. of taken yeah. back yeah. by Miss it. You, when I had it. Yeah. yeah, I was yeah. like, all right, I'm gonna have this Kolsch, and I was like, oh, this is uh, quite it's solid. solid. Yeah, yeah. Pia linked that the other day. Actually, I think he just came. Yeah. I loved. That. I think beer. One of the beers of the years for me was their Cafe Corsi. <laughs> Yes, that was excellent. Killer, killer beer. I had the bitumen years barrel age one next to the OG one in a can. Me too. And it was fascinating to try them side by side. And I know I've got the Saint Cacao. Saint Cacao? There's another word beforehand. Fuck, I can't picture it. I have a cherry version and an OG and then the barrel age. So they're just they're just been doing oh, I'm even looking at it because I kept the bottle. Um there's a, a, a series of beers they did mostly uh, female names that ended in E W T E, so Georgette yeah. Paulette. Um, you get exactly. So I like the Paulette bottle. I kept it because it was a glass, like the see-through glass bottle. Gorgeous. And then, yeah. that was, I think, with tangerine. It was like these barrel-aged, a uh, golden sours with fruit, and they were just so fire. That whole see Claudette, like their whole series. He gave me one of all the Georgette. There's so many. Um, just, just really so, so creative, Please. just so creative. So many styles. Another brewery that that is on the list because of their creativity, and, and just nailing each one. There's rarely a miss, which is insane. And and even when there is a miss, they're quick to catch and they pull the whole lot, which is yeah. Amazing. I know they even had a non-alcoholic beer this year that uh, exactly. Pia said they had an infection in. He gave me one. He they said, pulled the whole thing. Yeah, he said you can drink. Okay, can I drink it? He said yes. Yeah. So I drank. I love non-alcoholic beers now. By the way. Um, on the nights, because I have strict non-drinking nights, I've been really enjoying f- the feeling of still having something that's completely non-alcoholic. But he said, don't take a picture of it or none. They're going to redo it. I'll get that out to you. But I like that. They owned it. I feel like their branding is really consistent. Their merch is fun. Their actual, the brewery isn't huge. I don't know how they pump out, bro. Like, they have to have some other place where they're doing stuff. They may have. Double shifting. Double shifting. The brewery just pump because it's not that big. It really isn't. Um, and they got a cute shop in there, and it's located pretty cool. And the, and the other brewery is like above a restaurant that they don't own, so it's like the top floor with a huge patio, and it's just looking over. I think it's the St. Lawrence River. Um, that would make uh, sense. And, and, and looking at the, um, I think it's the Adirondacks or another mountain range, something like that. Um, it, was, it was just fantastic, and you know, given going there in COVID, it was super felt super safe, and you know, wear the mask in, and you sit down. But it was just, and Alex is he's the owner. I don't think he's the brewer, uh, but he's um, just a lovely guy. He's the one who's on the social as well. He's super receptive. I feel like he's just a kind dude. Uh, they're hardworking. They're hustlers, and, and hiring. I told him, I was like, "You're hiring PL was the smartest shit you did, bro." Like he he knows everybody. He is uh, just the loveliest. You know those people that no one talks shit about because they're just so lovely? Like, that's that guy. Oh, he really he's, is. He's right up there with the overhop crew. Yeah. Just yeah. You can't, excellent, excellent human. Great humans. Uh, and there's a lot of great humans in BL, let's be real. But uh, PR is, is, is elite level. So, shouts to you, PR. Thank you for keeping us dripping. We will always support uh, Rallabox. So, I'm glad that we all agreed that they were one of the, uh, you know, one of our faves. Yeah, and welcome to the media world with the IPA podcast. Yeah, shall we uh, move on? We'll, we'll stick with this beer. We'll go to a next one, and then we'll uh, we've got this will be the third last, and we have two more. We'll get to the new beer. So, Perfect. looking at the list, another one of our top ten is Avant Garde in uh, Oshilaga here in Montreal. Sean and Renault are, are like good friends of uh, at least our podcast. I know I probably knew them. Did I, know, I didn't know them through Noah actually. I met him randomly. Do you, have you spoken to them, Matty? Do you know? I have. I've had Sean on the podcast uh, back at Chambly the same time that I spoke with uh, Tatiana. Yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes. Okay. He was great. Super cool. Just immediate. Just excellent. Nice. Yeah. Vibe. Wonderful Super humans. friendly. One of those people that like immediately friends. Awesome. Awesome. I, and then this year he was on my very first uh, Montreal round table. table discussion. Yeah. And he was he was super cool. Sean is a wild man. Um love those dudes. They they aside from Overhop, they were the first six uh, contract brewing success story. We interviewed them when they were contract brewing. Sean was letting me like he was got cognac barrels, like barley wine in a cognac barrel and he'd pull out the nail and I'd be underneath like letting it pour into my <laughs> mouth and shit. Like that was episode thirty nine, I'll never forget it. Like like that was one of your first Quebec ones, if yes, I'm not it was. mistaken. Yep, yeah. that was at Oshlag when Sean was the hired brewer at Oshlag. And then they got their own space. 
within the building. I was so proud of them because I had, every time I saw them at festivals, him and Renault were just welcoming and give you a hug and just good fucking dudes. And to see them open their space and it was so huge. It was in the yeah. same building on, um, on Oshelaga and Dixon um, in, you know, a, a same uh, space as Oshelaga and things like that. I, I love it. They've, they've created a really great vibe. Um, they still let other people contract out of their space. Which is very cool. That see, that's that's the the giving circle, which is yeah, amazing. Like because loop, he loop started alone. there, yeah. and exactly, and he's able to give back. Another brewery that we were talking about, the Sankey M, doing everything fire. Another brewery that genuinely does everything fire is Avant Garde. As far as like the you know Jet Set Pilsner is a French Pilsner. It's one of the like, I love that a one. It's one of the greatest Pilsners uh, in Quebec. They you know they're. Um, their haze has been fire. They have an amazing brown ale, strangely enough. Um, they do a lot of blanche and a lot of sours and stuff. They're barrel aged shit. Like yeah, for me, it's not- their barrel program that's what excites Absolutely. me the, the most. Blended, the blended stuff that they've been doing is just killer. Even even when they're doing it at, at um, uh, Osteig, it was it was still excellent back then, and now it's on a whole other level. They have the fooder and they have all that stuff. My favorite beer this year, and I, I imagine you might concur. No, I'm not sure if you got this one, uh, Maddie, but it was called Nuance D'Alfonso. And it was. The, I didn't get that one, no. It was basically a barrel aged smoothie sour with fermented fruit, so it wasn't going to explode. Jeez. And it was golden sour beer, and it was put. Alfonso mangoes were put on top of it, and it was the same or very similar body to many of the smoothie sours, but it was. Uh, and you know, not pasteurized, but just fermented. So that means it was not going to explode because the sugars aren't being eaten up by the yeast. And it was just, it was just fantastic the way that it, that it was blended, and and it was just such an interesting beer. And they had another one, I think it was called Frambo, and it was a framboise that version. I had. It was delicious. That was great. Yeah, pretty similar style with that, raspberries. Was that a collab with someone? Matera, I believe. With Matera, yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. Matera, yeah. And that was just an exceptional beer. Yeah, their their bourbon barrel aged barley wine. That that was excellent too. I forget the name of it. That uh, I just got to try recently. Um, is that the, the the picture of the the lady? Yeah. Like it looks like a comic yes, book. Yes, exactly. Yes, that one's fucking awesome. Um, that's the thing. Like they have a really good mixed fermentation kind of thing going and blending, uh, like barrel aged sour blends. But their uh, their stouts and their barley wines and that whole thing, they do really well with that too. And that's hard to do sometimes without infecting the other one. Like I don't know how they're how they're working that, because they also have um, a jukebox as well, which is their other brand, um, which put out black metal. Yeah, yes. that's that's the one I'm thinking of in particular. Which is funny. Which is funny that I didn't. I haven't tried that beer actually. <laughs> it was great. I had two cans. I gave one to Nate. We could. We could I haven't one. seen one. I have. I haven't seen. I would have picked it up had I seen. Okay, it. we can talk to him. You gotta, you you should, uh, you should definitely talk to them. The, the, that shit is fire. The, the jukebox. I'm, I'm waiting too. for them to make a death metal, and my name better be on it. But. Hey man, <laughs> send that message. It's gonna happen. Fifteen percent alcohol. Or minimum, something. minimum. Yeah, this shit is just like it's great, man. Like they're good dudes. They're working hard. They just got a pizza oven, a wood fired pizza. Actually, it's yeah. not wood fired. It's like Insane, gas because he said the wood is too annoying because Montreal has crazy wood laws. But um, which I didn't know, which is fascinating because the, when you're burning wood, there's embers and stuff. So that means you'd have to have all this other crazy stuff that would make it too, excuse me, too expensive to run. So they have a gas fired, but the wood, you know, the circular Italian yeah. style one. So they've got hired proper chefs and stuff. I saw them posting about it. So and they're they're open, they're great. doing deliveries and they're doing deliveries locally first because because when he came to drop off the beer, I'm like, well, I'll I'll buy like a four pack of Jet Set and some pizzas would. We'll, would you deliver to where I'm at? And it's a little far, unfortunately, um, from what they're trying to do it locally first. But they got a permit to be able to deliver beer and food. I'm so happy for them. Um, he's, you know, seemed to be fairly positive about the future and stuff. And um, yeah, man, I just, I just really like them a lot. They're just my favorite. Uh, I overhop them the second ones, but they were the first ones I've seen who went from contract brewing to running their own facility, and even better in the same building. And it's huge. And it's fire, the quality, the merch is amazing. I just enjoy every time I go to Avant Garde, I always tell people if they come to Montreal, that's in the list of where I tell them to go. It's just one of my favorite places. Shouts to them. Definitely check them out if you haven't. Uh, I guess we should probably keep it moving. Should we go to the final beer and then the last two brews? And then we can go to the oh, bonus. Yeah.
So, all right, we have two breweries to go in our top 10. This was one of my favorite discoveries of this year. And I, this is thanks to Noah for putting me onto these guys. Uh, we just had them on the podcast last week. Brasserie Generale out of Quebec City. Um, these guys, man, I, like, I'm so impressed. So we, we did a, uh, a collaboration with the tourism office of uh, Quebec City in late August. And uh, one of the breweries that we went to was Brasserie General. And uh, we had a great time. We met up with Max, who was on the podcast, and uh, the dude Sam, who I think he runs the production facility. And um, we went to the... They have two. They have a production facility. I believe it's called St. Malo. And then they have um, the brew pub in uh, the hipster area called Limwalu. I need something cleared up because I'm a big fan of this, but... I see like two brands that are the same brand, and I'm confused. Okay, okay. so the BG 18E Rue. Thank you. Okay, yes. So the um, the actual the 18 Disney TM Rue. That's their brew pub on 18th Street in Limwalu, which is like Myland. So it's the hipster the cool area place. of okay. Myland yeah. of, uh, of of Quebec City. The production brewery is just Brasserie Generale. So they have two accounts, and they have fire ass food. Uh, we did not get to eat there because we had to keep running and it was really annoying because when we went, it was probably like 2 p.m. and they were having lunch and they got the food out. So we're like, oh, let us take some photos of the beers next to the food. And um, fuck, man, that food looked amazing, like fried chicken and like just it was just like quality, quality shit. So, you know, if you I definitely recommend uh, anyone who's watching or listening to go check out the podcast we did on the video version on um BAOS because they took us on a little bit of a tour of their of they, they actually did it from the Disney TM Rue. So they went to the back area and the way that they had this tiny space, they built a mezzanine floor, they got tanks on both floors. I'm just so impressed. So the beer that we chose to drink tonight is called Interlude. It's their triple IPA at ten percent. Which is a style I normally hate, but it's delicious. <laughs> I do not enjoy this style in any shape or form either. Um <laughs> But this one what? has all uh, all Citra Cryo and oh sorry Citra Cryo and Cryo Equinot. Sorry, Noah. No, that's quite alright. Um, yeah, so people might remember Bessie Janaya because they've been around for seven years, which is quite seven. a long time. Yeah, it's a long um, time. But you know, people kind of think of them. I don't know how to explain it, but like not particularly exciting. Um, and then when they opened the brew pub. Was it two years ago, you said, Craig, or it was three? Uh, two years ago, correct, yeah. He yes. brought on Max, and Max used to work at... Uh, uh, Beau- La Barberie. Beaupré. I uh, know, at Beaupré. Oh, no, they met at La Barberie, then he went to Le Beaupré. Yes, correct. Yeah, um, and then he came on as a partner, and then that's when things kind of became more contemporary, if that makes any sense, like pushing... Yeah, Max um, some cool Hayes shit, man. pushing like the, the the more fun stuff and really and, and tightening everything basically because he was even we were even talking about their barrel program because they were just releasing all these barrel aged beers constantly and then Max and them were saying like they went from having this huge barrel room where shit just wasn't really working and they were releasing stuff that was kind of subpar to okay let's scale this down to a small number of barrels that we can control better. And then release smaller amounts, and uh, you know, release stuff that's that's really solid. Like and Kevin managed to secure some of that seventh anniversary launch brews, and that that's really that how so I discovered good. them. Yeah, man. I and I <laughs> bought far too many of those. <laughs> and for my two hundredth episode just recently, I enjoyed that uh, Grammeier, the, the birthday cake. Grandma Mars Gacko. Yes, yes, exactly. The 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 pastry stout with uh, Michael Stane from from Dark Tranquility, who's a huge craft beer nerd. He's a home brewer and he's an absolute rock star. So he was very intrigued by the whole thing too. So killing it. Um once again, I want to see. I haven't gone into the other styles from them outside of haze and barrel age. I'm excited to see what else they have. Yeah, yeah man. When we yeah, were there, we sure. got to try the most interesting one. Tiff grabbed. Obviously, I grabbed the haze. They had one called "I Like Big Hops," and I cannot lie. And it was like, yeah. there was. <laughs> I've had that. Yeah, it was like yo, because I had a fresh on tap there. I was like, fuck, this is amazing. And Tiff got a brown ale collaboration on nitro with a cafe, uh, a local cafe called Nectar who I've been 
wanting to go to and I've been trying to order their shit but I now Tiff gets sent coffee we're overblown with coffee beans as well so I just can't even go out of my way to get stuff but they did this collab and I was like yo like a brown ale on nitro with coffee was nice fire I was just so impressed um I just think they're they're great dudes uh I like what they've done with their brand they're diversifying they're really committing to doing stuff I mean they sent the smoothie Mm -hmm. sour that Juman smooth oh so good it was incredible um and the, the artist is yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Romain Lasser. Yeah. I hope I'm saying that right. Shout out to you, so man. Cool. It's so cool. It's so cool. The art is, it's is very original, impressive. but like just fun. Yeah. The man. color scheme, everything. I re- like this label in particular is pretty amazing. Uh, agreed. I like. I even like the way that they've kind of rebranded the BG Brasserie Obey and like they yeah, changed they, that. They, they, general, it's was, almost like it's almost like not, Mad Men. All, all yeah. Like Yo. It's true. That's exactly what it feels like. Well said. It's just like, yeah, man. I I, I think that obviously the three of us appreciate visual uh, design and stuff. And when a brewery is able to match a sort of ethos and then the quality of the beers and then their design, something like Sankey and Baron have been one of the exceptional ones. Yeah. Overhop, of course. And I think Brasserie General have just like... Misorum. Net Misorum. Yeah. Um, even the I mean, brewery we're going to talk about next. Next, I was about to say them amazing, too. Yeah. Like, I really just feel like there's been some exceptional stuff, and I'm really, I'm, I'm Sir really John happy. too. Sorry. Yeah, so John, we could name almost every one of the ones we named tonight, <laughs> like in their own way, like Rallabock and Mag Consistent. I'm not in love with it yeah. in the same way, but I think it's cool that it's always the same layout, and they've got a piece of art on every can. And that piece of art could be transferred to merch designs and stuff like that. Um, well, I I'm think really when you go, like, I'll look at a brewery sometimes that'll be like, "Oh, that's really cool branding." I just don't like it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying that's you with Rollabuck, but um, it's like looking I at think, a shirt and saying that's a cool shirt, but I'm not going to wear it. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think there are a lot of breweries that are like that for me, where it's like, "Oh, I can appreciate what you're doing. I wouldn't have chosen it, but that's totally fine too." Because if everyone, if I chose them all, then they would all kind of look similar, right? Like. <laughs> um and, and and like yeah, I, I don't think Rob Buck would be my first choice, but I think it's it's this like fun, almost like hectic yeah. over the top thing that's like intense and kinda awesome and like they have this huge selection of, of glasses. Like they've made like fifty different glasses and they're all kind of fun and ridiculous and um I I, I dig what they're doing, but yeah, it wouldn't be my thing. Um no, not an interview. I don't like that word. So, so this is where we're, where I, I think I think no offense they make probably the best beer in Montreal alongside Masora, but Brewski, their branding is not my personal favorite. No, no I tend to, to but agree. I love their beer and I support them a hundred percent. But I I personally feel, but they they're not fighting for shelf space. No, exactly. Because they're doing you gotta go there. But I also it. think that you, you're I'm kind of with you in that I wouldn't choose it. It's still kind. It's interesting, and it's. Consistent. Well done in the sense that like it's all original art and it's um, the co- like there's a lot of color it's, it's it's busy it's fun I wouldn't go with it personally but like I don't look at Brewski blanding and be like oh man they need to hire somebody you know what I mean whereas then you no, look at no, someone no. else and you're just like oh this is such a mess <laughs> like they need to hire somebody whereas in Brewski um, it it's might just not, not be my me. it might be my, not be my taste but. It works for whatever they're trying to do. No, I definitely agree with that. Um, shall we move to the next? Then the final of the, the top last, ten? The final. We final had to the include them. Ten. and We need a side note. They were not on my or Craig's list, but we, we argued. It was probably the one we, we, we argued very nicely, <laughs> which was not really an argument whatsoever, but, but we argued. Because we were like, and, and all right, fine. You know, because they're so influential that we didn't get a chance to to actually taste that many of them, me and no. Craig, which was the reason why we had the issue of including them. They're hard to get, but they are very important to the Quebec craft beer scene, which is why they are this final brewery on the top 10 of 2020. Noah, who is this brewery? It's this, it's <laughs> this, it's this brewery right here. <laughs> right there. You see it. So, Brasserie Zuba Canada. What's the su- You have to. We have to. We have to. We have to make great beers. They they are they're 
there would be hypothetically no misorum if they, if you know probably they, they would probably argue against that and say that they want to do it even yeah. before they hit but 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 they make great beers and they're expanding and i'm hoping that means that i can drink more of them yes the expansion is very promising yeah i mean i'm lucky because my local dep also gets buck canada uh, and, and <laughs> i'm Beaudry. moving to Provo. <laughs> <laughs> El Perro, yeah. let's go El Perro, i'm moving to El Perro. it's happening so yeah, sure. I mean, like they—they're one of the the earlier ones to really jump on the haze thing, and they've been doing it extremely well with with their milkshake IPA, Las Tabernacos, which was one of the first in the province and one of the first I tried. That was like, this is awesome. And then I tried a bunch of others, and I was like, I hate milkshake IPAs, except for this one. <laughs> um, their Hipa, their Hipa's uh, the killer. Hipa series. Uh, where they 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 have the usually two hops, um, and they do one through. I think they've gone up to eleven or twelve, or I don't remember at this point. Um, but I think most notable, like the most notable thing, and even especially in twenty twenty, although it started in in twenty nineteen, is their their stouts. I feel like they have literally they have literally changed the course of stout brewing in quebec bringing in the whole pastry thing and even to this day um their pastry stouts outshine any of the others and i'd say almost by like a substantial uh, amount too they and i was talking to chris from hops and bros about that uh, when he was dropping off the saint and Badal stuff and we were chatting about how like no one like even though like other breweries are doing it and it's pretty good. No one comes close. And he was saying it's because they invested in the this in spe- special equipment for it early on that they're able to like mash in these in this like giant um, device that allows them to like just throw a, an insane amount of adjuncts in there without it clogging up anything. Um, so I think that's that's part part of it. But like their their beers have this like this this insane body and this insane richness without being overly sweet and just like marrying that beautifully rich thick thing in a way that others haven't quite gotten. And which is why they're they're they sell out in, in seconds at this point. And I'm very fortunate in that I do photography for them so they generally allow me to sample everything they produce but also my local temp gets their stuff <laughs> uh, or at least the stuff that they distribute so um and they will they'll yeah they'll send me the, the samples there but even then i can go and buy like hypo whenever i want it's pretty great yeah and that was just to be clear as well like the reason why matt and i did not have bar canada in our top 10 was that we just hadn't tried them like I, drank, I, I think I drank, I drank one. I think and I maybe think, two. Do you know? I think the two that we had were at our night in January, our blind taste test night, and everything else I had, I had. There was a collab with Sankey M and maybe a collab with somebody else, but them as the collab. So I just didn't get hold of it. I know the dudes, but I don't really like send beer like that. Um, I haven't had much of a need to purchase beer, and and I don't go to depths to like stumble upon. Uh, but kind because of, to be honest, if I did ever see it anywhere, I don't think I would even hesitate. Yeah. I would just purchase. Well, we need to have them on and uh, and, and was, do some sampling. I'm going to be. Uh, I'll be the the series that we we started this year was called um, uh, Against the Grain, and it was about the breweries that really started changed to, everything, changed everything in Quebec. So we did four. We did Brewski, Misorum. Uh, we did. Um, oh my gosh, I'm having a blank. We did one more, and we did La Bordage. What the fuck am I forgetting? Oh, my God. Anyway, there was one more, and the other two to go were Boreal and um, Bar Canada. They were both locked in. We went, we did a collab on Friday, March the 13th with Wood Brothers. And then on that Monday, which was, I guess, 14, 15, 16th, lockdown happened. I had the Thursday, the 19th, locked in with, um, uh, with, with Boreal. They canceled, and then the following week was with... Um, uh, about Canada and then they cancelled which yeah. we wouldn't have had a choice about which made sense yeah so I was like I, w- I was, wasn't sure whether to do it this way or to try and just like retroactively finish up that season in person there so I wasn't sure huh Labradage, is that La- uh, no what was the third one 
Um, oh, Lagabier. Lagabier. Thank you. Um, of course. But yeah, so I wasn't sure what to do. But I was like, oh, maybe it's probably just easier to have them on this way since this is the only way that things are happening. I imagine 2021, I'm not going to be real. So I don't think it's going to be that much different to, to this year. No, I don't I think, think so either. I Unless think 20, this vaccine thing becomes real quick. A, a real thing that it actually works, doesn't turn people into zombies and actually kicks things up. That's a whole other conversation. But um, <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, it, might, it, might get, it might get worse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, who's going to take that risk? But yeah, so like, I, that is one thing I would really love to have more of an access to this stuff, really, is what it is. But everything I've ever had from them is just out of control, but I have not ever had their pastry stout, uh, pastry stouts or anything like that. It's literally just a haze and a $7.50 can of pills on there, uh, Las Parecio, which is fire, by the way. But it's just hella expensive. Yeah, I, I've never had a, a pastry stout from 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 Canada. Canada. No. Yes, you have. With you that night? Yeah. Oh, we tried one. Okay, but that night that night was a very very <laughs> packed night. I th- I think we drank thirty seven beers <laughs> minimum. Uh, I can check my uh, Instagram. Um, we did have one. It wasn't their best, but it was still fire. It was their their the only one they ever did with peanuts. Oh, I remember. They that. usually yeah, have a yeah, nut yeah. component. They're they're Dude, just cool. <laughs> incredible with coconut, and they've done stuff with hazelnut. They've done their macadamia nut ones are amazing, and then they do a lot of like blends of different nuts. That was the well, I think the only peanut one they did, and it was fine. But there's something about peanuts that I don't know, and it wasn't their it wasn't their best, um, but it was still better than any other peanut beer I, I'd ever had. Um, do you guys want to really quickly kind of just like name out some of the stuff that we? Uh, some of the breweries that we didn't talk about. Yes, yes. Um, our, our, our honorable mentions. Yes, I'm going to grab go my first. collab beers. Maybe one of you guys can go first. I'm just going to grab my. I, I, already, I already got. I already got mine. Go ready to go. So I'll, I'll knock out my collab beers. Um, very stoked to, that this year that uh, I was able to get three collabs. Two of them being for Vox and Hops, and then another one for my band Cryptopsy. So obviously, let's go with. Uh, Kanawaki Brewing Company. They, they drew um, excellent, excellent brewer. Uh, his beers are phenomenal. I, I'm, I love this brewery. I'm excited to see what what's going to come in 2021. I feel like if it wasn't for the pandemic, they would have really taken off because of the limitations of being in Kanawaki. I feel like it really restricts the brewery's the hypeness uh but this was an easy he wrote me in the middle of the summer said crisp topsy are you uh, in i was like i'm 100 percent in what do we oh what he do we, came up with that this? name he, he came up with it i thought it was a you thing yeah no, 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 i can't and i didn't even come up with pilsner supremacy that's that's oh, my him? guitarist christian donaldson uh, because we have an album called whisper supremacy that that's where that came from um love that brew super cool a new world pilsner oh it's insane matt like I, it blew my fucking mind, dude. I can't express. It's cool, eh? Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to try. I can't wait to try. He told me. He told me today that he's rebrewing it in January. So good. It Amazing. Was exceptional. Congratulations, man. I loved it. Well, the artwork's fantastic. So he's got to rebrew. Even if it wasn't great, he should rebrew it. Uh, rebrew it just for that artist's work. Yeah. Right? Philip Ivanovic, the Vox and Hops alumni and uh, amazing artist for here from Montreal. He's done uh, artwork for a bunch of local metal bands, including uh, other international metal bands. He's amazing. He's amazing. He's my go-to label art person from now on. And uh, shout out to Henderson Brewing, of course, for, for making this brew as well. Oh, about it. Hops. Hold it up closer. The, right the into Devastation. Back a bit. Oh, amazing. The Devastation, which was a collab that was supposed to be for an after party for the Devastation on the Nation tour, which Vox and Hops was uh, the official sponsor for, but sadly that whole tour got cancelled. But they still made the beer and they canned it and I got some. And that sold out super quick too this was a black lager it was boozy it was dangerous yeah it, it was, was really delicious. really boozy i was like Jesus <laughs> I think it was 7.6 yeah. but it, it didn't taste like it at all it was super dangerous yeah it was a great beer so so i i have to give a shout out to henderson uh local people this is not quebec but i had to talk about that uh lo- local people i have to give a shout out to is uh, of course uh the dark lords uh, <laughs> how can i not mention the dark lords they put out uh, a very controversial brew this year yes the peanut I would have loved to have tried that nonsense. I I, I never got hands on it. 
I'm sure it was. I, I I'm just being silly, but like it just became like this meme. Yeah, like it was. It became a thing. It was I, a lot. I would love like, to have it, tried it. I'm not gonna lie. It was undrinkable. But it was it no. was fun. Oh, no, it was delicious. Really? It was, I couldn't it was, drink it. It. Was, it was chocolatey, fun, weird. The color. If you closed your eyes, you would have liked it a lot better. I think <laughs> it wasn't pretty. <laughs> but I, I like great innovation, innovation behind it. Yeah, innovation. <laughs> innovation, Noah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, man. Yeah, they're moving forward, pushing forward. Um, Gallicus and Lactin. I put them in the same box because when I was in quarantine in lockdown, when I wasn't going to work, I would order beer from Witzen Bier and they would just I would ask for some some a few gozes uh, send me some haze whatever fresh haze you have and send me a few stouts so that's how I discovered both of these breweries so killer Gallicus let's start with that another amazing Gatineau. brewery from Gatineau what the, what the hell is going on there's Aladari which yeah. is also out of there it makes no sense what's going on there. Great haze. Love it. Love it. I want to see more coming from them. I'm excited to see what happens. And uh, long time, same thing. Crazy haze. I, there was times that I would get one and I would just be like, what is this? This is amazing. Another brewery that I love uh, was on my top 10. I think it was on the top 10 last year was Noctem. Yes. I didn't have a chance to drink enough of them. So I'm excited to see what's going on. They just did their, their anniversary recently. I'm excited to taste some of those brews. I know they're on my way. Um, let, let, let's see. And you had the only other two you had was Echo and Silo. Yes, of course. How can I forget the the the, the best crispy boys that are happening in Montreal? Silo, so cool, excellent, just just super super crisp brews. To check Pilsner inspired, love it, love it. I, I can't support them enough. I wish that they were in a better location. I feel like they're in the middle of nowhere, honestly. I, I hope that, that, that they get enough people up there to support them. I would add beer. And the beer is also connected to Silo. I really like their brews. I think that they're super interesting. And um, support the things you love, people. I love that. And Echo, of course, JF Lejeunci is another one of those amazing humans in the beer world that is just immediately we're friends he makes very creative brews such as the collab that rocked probably the most memes <laughs> which is the perfect transition <laughs> to your honorable mentions uh the the love dust just just rocked <laughs> It was, it was a brilliant idea. Yes. And, and honestly, honestly, it not only was it a, a, a brilliant idea of marketing sparkles in a red beer for Valentine's Day, but it was a good beer. Yes, it, it really tasted, was. It was delicious. That beer looks it, unopened. Oh, this, this, is, this is water. I had nice. someone today, I sent this beer two, three months ago to a, just a really strong supporter of BOS, and they drank it today. And it came out in January. <laughs> Uh, was this still good? Uh, they said it was good, but I think they don't know a lot. So I'm going to send. Being nice. I'm going to send them the new <laughs> one. So when it's fresh, uh, I guess. I'm How's that well. happening? Good. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing it again in January uh, again. Yes. So loved us, uh, Echo. This was uh, one of our two collabs this year. Um, yeah, a glitter New England IPA session, of course, because it's Echo with Kavik yeast and uh, red glitter, as well as Sabro Galaxy Big Circuit and Calypso Hearts. But this Came year, out- you're not doing Kavik, right? I asked them to take away the Kavik. It was my request. Um, and they agreed. But the problem was we couldn't change the hops. And we wanted... The the, uh, the number one con- uh, complaint about this beer, or criticism is the word I'm looking for, was that it, it didn't look like how it tasted. That people wanted fruit in it. So we couldn't do test batches because, because of COVID. The can printing is eight weeks rather than like two to three weeks. So we would have had to do test batches for this that comes out in January in, like, August. Yeah. So, unfortunately, we didn't get to do that. But this is coming out again. This is definitely the most, I feel like, one of the top three, top five most controversial Quebec breweries this year. I really thought it would have been, uh, people would have been angrier about it, to be honest. I was kind of mad. But more people asked me for this beer than anything I've ever done before. So this was fun. Shouts to JF, JP, the guys at Broadway. Um, Jean says... JF and JP at Echo, JL, Jean-Luc at Broadway, uh, so many Jean, Jean hyphens. So this was super dope. Another a brewery that I had in my uh, thing was L'Espace Public. Shouts to Simon, uh, Val, Carl, the whole crew. This is a, We did this beer again. This is the third year in a row we've done this beer. This is a milkshake uh, marmalade sour. Um, this year's one was really great. They actually opened, I'm really proud of them, they opened their own production facility in Oshelaga this year. 
Um, so they brewed it out of there. They did it their own way. They instead of brewing out of Oshlag. So I was super happy. This was great. They did another variant that wasn't a collab with us for Christmas, like a Clementine cranberry one. Um, so I talked to Simon and I was like, yo man, like I'm down for all the collabs. So whatever else you want to do, we did another version of this. I think it was last year's blackberry black current or something. Um, but yeah, really proud of that. So at least we've got two sort of recurring collabs, uh, this year. We didn't do as many as we normally would just because some of the ones we would do were like, um, you know, brew, you know, keg only and stuff like everyone was canning. So I didn't really push my luck. I knew breweries were kind of hurting this year and it wasn't really like, uh, the same type of situation for collabs. Did you talk about the Easter egg one? Did I miss that? Oh, fuck. I did three collabs. I forgot about that. Okay, sick. Yeah, we did a collab with Wood Brothers. Oh, my God. Was... I forgot about that one, too. So I was... wanted it so bad. It looks so good. Oh, it was great. So it was Beerism, Beer with Podcast, Nathan Does Beer, Hops and Bros with uh, Wood Brothers, and it was called Cad Bunny. I've got the thing up there. I actually <laughs> forgot. It was a, a... Thank you for reminding me, man. It was a yeah. basically a Cadbury cream egg pastry stout for easter so me and chris because it was right it was literally me and tiff the, the weekend before this was the friday the 13th the weekend before i just said it before i went to wood brothers for a collab and i fucking forgot about yeah. it the weekend before tiff and i went to vermont and everyone was starting to sanitize no one was wearing masks yet just sanitizing We're like yeah this is all kind of kind of crazy eh? and then we went to wood brothers and we didn't know could you shake hands did you have to elbow like what was the deal yeah it was, it was, really it was getting to a point where like me and nate didn't even end up going because we were just no. kind of, like it was just starting to like get a bit crazy do what do we do what do we not do so yeah it was like right on that, knew how to on behave. that point yeah it was yeah. literally and literally two days later that's when the lockdown started so we did the collab. We Chris and I participated in it. They made like a fudge, like a local place made a cream egg fudge of the inside of it, and then we put actual cream eggs in the uh, in the stout, which obviously gave it not much of a head. It was a little oily and such, but um, yeah, that was a really fun collab as well. Um, yeah, it, it was wasn't a killer was beer, but it was fun. It was cool that we all got to do it together, and it was a short release, sold out really quick. Yeah, um, super fun. I'll quickly just name I had Gallicus on my list as well. Discovered him this year. Met Sammy. Super cool guy. I feel like they got a lot of uh, potential. Um, Lager beer I had because they're just like classic. I feel like they've, you know, their Pilsner this year was amazing. They, they finally brought out in cans. Um, ukulele. Ukulele. Yeah. I just had it last night. The latest one. Phenomenal. They sent us a few stouts they the other day. just dropped some pastry stouts. A, yes. barrel, a bourbon barrel-aged pastry stout and then a regular baby pastry yes. stout, which I haven't tried yet. No, oh, yeah, yeah. What's excited. the difference between those two? The bottle one is bourbon barrel. The yeah. other one is regular. Is that it? Okay. Yeah. I don't know if they're necessarily the same thing, but they're both pastry stouts and one spent time in a barrel on one didn't it's circle, circle. the circle one is the can i thought yeah yeah oh and there was a different one was the, circle. yeah yeah exactly right so i yeah they sent them the other day they were super cool i just love what they do the great people as well um yeah. i had beauregard down because i went there early this year we did a video uh a uh, where does ring craft in montreal part two nate came with us and uh we went there for the first time really impressed the barrel aged stuff, even that weird nut beer was just fun. And now, fun. right now, right now, what they're doing is very cool for yes. the anniversary. Old anniversary. And gin, and they're doing, yep. they're distilling now. Super yep. cool, man. Like, I just, yeah, loved them. Uh, a la food, this year they did um, the Alane de Rouge, de la Rouge, which was for the Rouge de Mechanac, where they did all these collabs. Um, Sick beer. Super cool. A very, we were, they were like, pick 12 ambassadors, and they were sending it. So they sort of stopped. I think they did five. I actually haven't done the fifth one yet. I've been slacking. But I didn't send any more, and I think the rest of them must have just been delayed or something. Um, but Alafuda always fire. They're always doing some fun stuff. I had knocked them because I went and visited them this summer. They really, really impressed me. Another one in Quebec City really good. was uh, in, exactly. They were just like from there, the sours and the haze, and I think they even had some crispy boys. All super fire, great dudes, great they setup. They just dropped their Pilsner right now. Amazing. I, I love think it. it's their first Pilsner. Yeah, their branding is sick. Just good people, man. I, I really, really cool. The other one in Quebec City that really impressed me was Emporium. Uh, we went there. Some of the best yes, pizza, yes. wood-fired pizza, and they had, like, the burrata cheese, and their, their haze was amazing. Their stouts were amazing. Their Cookie Monster was... Uh, I think I had that one, yes. And they had... Uh, was it Cookie? Yeah, I think Cookie Monster was the one. They had another stout I had a couple of. They had the double IP Goon is the OG. Then they had, I think it was Brain something was the double IPA. Um, brain Juice. Brain Juice. Both of them were super fire. And the last one I had was Silo uh, JP, who's, as you mentioned, Matt, was the owner of, is also the owner of Bira with his girlfriend, Wiener. So he started Silo, all Czech-inspired, the beers, all that, the, the traditional stuff. 
uh, haven't been down there because he's another guy who opened in the middle of a uh, a pandemic. So he's one to watch for me for 2021. I feel like there's a lot to go. Uh, Noah. Um, so uh, I, a couple overlaps, Alefu and Lagavere. Craig already touched on those, so I won't go into them too deeply. But Lagavere, totally awesome. Alefu pumping out the barrel age stuff like it's insane. They did the... Um, Oh, uh, the year one of with the, uh, the L'année de year Rouge. Of the Rouge, L'année de Rouge, which is their Flanders Red that they did a bunch of collabs with, all of them really uh, well made, and they, they just they just do a good job with their um, their barrel program, but then they also do a good job with their regular stuff too. Um, the two that I probably want to talk about the most are Robin and Sutton. Um, Robin started up, I think, in 2019, if I'm not mistaken, maybe 2018, but I think it was soon 2019. Um, and they kind of started in a way that's it's very unique that only a few other breweries have done, where they purchase the beer from another brewery, and then they take that beer and barrel age it and blend it. And then so the flora that exists within their barrels is what gives the beer the character. So they're not actually brewing beer themselves, but they're purchasing the wort and then basically processing it and then creating from there. And, and their stuff is is fucking phenomenal. Um, it's not easy to find, but if you want to drive out to the eastern townships, it's not like it's uh, it sells out in seconds or anything. Nice humans too. Nice uh, humans. Yeah, um, I've, I've had a chance to chat with them several times. It's even come out to my house a couple of times to drop off beer, and we we spent some time next to my pool, just talking and chatting about beer. Young younger guys too, like yeah, uh, yeah. early thirties, because we're old fucks. Um, <laughs> so yeah, if you like mixed fermentation, if you like sours, um, but nothing over the top, not like that American sour, not like the small the, pony thing more, where it's burning yeah, yeah. your your mouth. Very subtle tart acidity. Um, just a lot of like nice um, the wild wild yeasts and just look great. Uh, they're not really a brewery, so a great blendery. I guess you it's could really call it. Interesting. What what a, what a weird business model, but interesting. Yeah, Casey exactly. in uh, in in Colorado with that too. Until recently, they started brewing. Yeah, Casey was just blending, and this shit was. And insane. there's the one in, uh, in Vermont that I forget the name that you had a bottle, Craig. That I was kind oh, of blowing that you had the bottle. Yeah, back yeah, there. They only they, do one beer. They, I learned someone. Yeah. I mean, my boy Jason he used to be the they manager. Make one beer. Yeah, like he was the manager at um, Beverage Warehouse, which is the main one in Winooski there. And he was like, "Yo, I was trading him for because uh, he knows more people than I know here, so I can't get him shit that impresses him." So <laughs> he got um, before they were canceled CBS. And I, I wanted to get some. And I was like, I brought in some stuff that he asked for. And then he was like, yo, if you try it, he always just throws in something. He's a, one of those generous beer people who just gets stuff. He's like, you need to try this. And I had, I was like, yeah, I'll just hang on to it. And then someone, I think I mentioned or someone, I said, yeah, I got that. And I said, like, yo, you got back. Hey, God, are you fuck? And like, I drank it recently. I was like, oh, I, I get it. It was exceptional. Just a golden sour, barrel aged sour. Yeah, yeah, much like it had a really good, like goose uh, like profile to it. <clears throat> uh, in terms of uh, so, Robin and Sutton were on my top ten, um, but didn't make our overall top ten. But in terms of uh, on my bonus list, there's Harry Kana, and the only reason that oh, they yes. weren't necessarily on my top ten this year is in 2020, I didn't have a ton of their beers, but I'm sure if I had drank more. Um, I would have. That's what it comes down to, included in them. Yeah. yeah, and I th- I don't know if we we made this pretty explicit, but our list isn't necessarily the best beer brewed in Quebec this Period. year. Yeah, but yeah. almost like what's been new and interesting in twenty twenty to a certain degree, because like Jude Ciel is so still we got one of the of. best beer, but easily in the top ten for twenty twenty. But they they didn't. Um, I don't know. Like I said, like they didn't change, but they didn't give us something new to talk about, and that doesn't necessarily well, make they, it a they, bad thing. They actually thing. changed a lot. They and, changed and their branding. Had lots to give us to talk about, which is their branding. But yes. I don't want to go there. But <laughs> the, yeah. But we left a lot of the OGs out. That's yes. for sure. We're talking about new, exciting breweries. Uh, yeah, I feel like that's really what this was about. I feel like everybody knows who the OGs are. There's, you know, not that they don't deserve to be acknowledged, but. 
Judas Yell are always going to be, as long as they keep being consistent, they're always going to be in anybody's top 10, right? And so, like, I had Lurk S Dog on there because um, I, I, I feel like they, that does kind of fit into our model of what we were looking for this year because they, they, I think it was this year, if not towards the end of last year, when they, they brought came in the out with a huge line of, of New England IPAs. That was last year. Um, but into this year with some new additions to that lineup. Yes, right? exactly. Especially right, the, right, right now they started this whole new focused series, project right. series. And everything I've had has been amazing. The the Azaka one and the the Strata one, killer. killer. And what's fun about it is that it's actually quite available. Like especially yes. around my it's neighborhood, everywhere. like it's yeah. on. Is it at all the grocery stores? So yeah, like, absolutely. I, I feel like in the last since COVID, I, I've been really fortunate in that. Like I've just had this flow of haze. But prior to that, um, I didn't, and uh, I would just, you know, I I have a flow of other things. But then um, I would just go to the store and buy the Le Castal IPAs because they were available and there wasn't much else. Um, and the last one I have on the list was uh, uh, Four Origins, which um, is kind of dear to my heart because I have a, an old friendship with Mike. And um, I, I love I, I just dig what they do. I love the kind of more traditional stuff they're doing. They always just like really solid beers. They've done some hazy IPAs this year for the first time. And I think they did a good job with it. I wish they did more um, higher ABV beers, but that's just my my two cents. Because I know he's going to do them well when he does them. Um, but uh, like he loves playing with teas. He loves uh, taking kind of traditional styles and then doing their own twists to them, which I think is fun because I feel like Every time I crack one of their beers, it's interesting and different and maybe not as exciting as, as as we want as beer geeks, but I find it's always satisfying and enjoyable, and I think that's what they go for. Um, and there's going to be some really exciting new changes to that brewery coming soon, which I'm not allowed to talk, I'm not allowed talking about, but uh, big stuff's happening soon for them. And they did a collab with Joe Beef, for fuck's sake, which I forgot to mention. The, their lager was, yes, was the one lager. of my favorite lagers. Yeah, lager. so good. Agreed. So I guess in that mini little mini can, yeah, the, I would have had a big shoddy. crowler of it. <laughs> oh yeah, easily. Easy. So so no disrespect to anyone that we left out. I'm sure that we left out a bunch of people. Yes, we 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 love the Quebec craft beer scene and it's why i even started a podcast talking about metal and craft beer it's why i've met all of you it's it's a privilege to be a part of this group that we are of people that get to enjoy these products and and talk to people about them i i'm very stoked to have had this chance to chat with you and to hash out a top 10 which is really a top 30 top 40 yeah. probably really <laughs> yeah we're we're uh we're definitely testing ourselves trying to squeeze all the fire into a top 10 and once again like we all say we've obviously left a lot of people out these really represent what we had access to what we all drank the yeah. most uh, obviously the ones that we all crossed over on are the ones that we both all three of us got you know a, a decent amount of to be like yo this brewery was consistent over time they're in my top 10 um you know there's a lot of ones to watch uh, um for, for 2021 i'm excited for new breweries that are going to open i'm sure there's going to be a bunch um Either, either way, I I, I, I realize I just said that Sutton was in my top ten. And I didn't say a single thing about them. <laughs> go for the go for it. <laughs> but it just clicked. Anyway, I did a, a collaboration with Sutton a couple of years ago, and it, uh, it was called Brett Never Sleeps. And Pat is the head brewer there, and he's a good friend, and he makes uh, exceptional beers that are always brewed with Brettanomyces, which is a wild yeast strain. So what they do is is completely unique, uh, in my opinion, underrated in terms of hype, uh, because I don't think there's anyone else in the world doing what he does. You have Lambic, which is, yes, always brewed with some level of Britannomyces, but it's a whole other monster. It's all sour. It's, it's what it is. But what he does, like he can make an IPA with Brett. He can make uh, his porter is 100% Brett. It's, it's very unique. Always clean, always amazing. Uh, some of the best beer in the province. 
Sorry. Fantastic. Okay. No, 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 no. I forgot. It's important to mention that because you, it was one of your other collabs. And they did the, the barrel yeah. version that they didn't tell you about. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you actually did an extra one that came out this year that I hope you did get the bottle of that. I did. He he, uh, he had one left that he sent me. It was a Chardonnay barrel Chardonnay. version of Bread Never Sleeps, which, which was is a great idea. originally a Brut Brett IPA, which yes. there's a whole story behind, but I won't get into it. It was probably the first, if not the one of, if not the first, uh, Brute IPA. I think, <laughs> I think it was like the the second or third. You to you are the reason why I started buying Brute IPAs. Yeah, man. Yeah. I saw your there post you and I was like, "Well, this guy knows what's going on. <laughs> He's gonna be it. <laughs> <laughs> he knows. Um, I, I'm gonna start drinking that now. <laughs> God damn it! Let's do it." But look, yeah, so there's been basically all of this to say, like a two-hour podcast and episode to say. Can we we could back, do four hours on we this. We could easily do four hours. That's why we have to keep it, keep ourselves on a rope. But Quebec, congratulations, man. Like, for real, Quebec breweries have outdid themselves. I know Quebec drinkers are the most satisfied motherfuckers in the country. What we have at home for the for the time that i didn't travel i usually go to vermont a lot i go to the states we do a bunch of tourism things i would always be drinking beers from everywhere this year more than ever i drank probably more beers from quebec than anywhere and i've never been more satisfied i i'm so impressed with everything that we're doing here i'm proud to be living here in montreal and the breweries that we have across this province have just stepped up everything is is exceptional um, I'm really, really sat- happy. I think it's it's a world class province, and I think we need to be proud as fuck that we have this level of quality in our backyard. That whilst you know, I don't know, like I know Matt, you'd be traveling when you're touring. I don't know Noah, you don't really go a ton of places, and typically we. I go would... to my kitchen and then my bathroom and then back. Into be- this beer, room. beer, it. beer comes to Noah's house. <laughs> exactly. Why would he go anywhere like a chump to get beer when it just comes to him? <laughs> <laughs> but like I don't really feel like I'm missing out that much. I really just feel like locally is taking care of us in a way that it hasn't in the past and I'm looking forward to that just exploding even more so in twenty twenty one because I feel like it was a little bit of a slow start. Oh, this is cool, this is fine, and then boom, and then it just went insane across the board. It's amazing. Um, I'm stoked about it. Quebec should be proud. Every all the brewers, like fucking congrats, guys. Like Thank you for supplying us with the fire. Thank you for believing on all of our brands and, you know, trusting us to support what you guys are doing. I'm like Matt said, I'm honored and privileged to be a part of all of this, to know you guys and to call y'all friends and to hang out with you guys every week, which has been funner than ever. Like the, the, the pandemic has allowed us to hang out more than we would have otherwise. And it's kind of strange, but like, I appreciate, I appreciate it so much. Like the value that you guys bring to BOS and that I really feel like between us, we've really been able to, to grow each other's brands and work together a lot to support breweries, not just in Quebec, but across Canada, across the world. But, you know, I guess most of the stuff that we do is here in Quebec and I'm grateful for it. Grateful for you guys. I feel like uh, we had for an, a year that was a little bit rough for the whole world. We can definitely say that beer was great to us and, uh, I'm looking yeah, forward to that being you know, amplified next year, hopefully with a lot more health and safety for everybody um, and more uh, liver protection because we're going to need it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Ab- absolutely. We, we, we've, we've grown as a, a community. We've all come together. We are closer and uh, I've met way more brewers and I love it. And, and I just want to see, the Quebec brew scene continue to grow, collaborate, and and just be one unit combating the archaic laws that are cha- shackling yes. the, the the Quebec breweries to these stupid laws that were created after prohibition. It's 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 crippling. So it really anyone is. That's, that's not a brewer, buy local beer. Yes, support the local breweries that you love because they need it. They need they really it very do. very much. Yeah, yeah. This was great, guys. Yeah, guys. Uh, This was fantastic. Uh, I'm stoked this came out even uh, better than I thought. Cheers. Thank you for for, for, for creating this epic top 10 list of Quebec 2020 craft beer breweries. I couldn't have done it without you guys, and I had a great time. Cheers. Cheers. 
Hey, thank you all so, so much for listening right to the end. You know that I love and appreciate that. This was such a blast to do. I love hanging out with Noah and Craig. They are both extremely influential to the craft beer scene here in Quebec, and I am honored to call them my friends, but not only that, to have the chance to do things such as this, to collaborate with them, to to ask their opinions about things that I have going on in my mind. It, it is always, always, always a pleasure, and uh, I am really looking forward to uh, doing more things with you guys in 2021. As you heard, Quebec is on fire, just making a bunch of amazing craft beers, 2020 at least had that for us to enjoy. Although we were missing a bunch of other things, the Quebec craft brew scene was there for us. I'm very excited to see what's going to be coming up in 2021. The sky's the limit with all the creative, talented, ambitious brewers that we have here, and I am sincerely looking forward to it. If you enjoyed this Vox and Hops episode, you should absolutely go and subscribe to it on the podcast platform of your choice. But not only that, you should take the time to rate it and write a review, because if you do that, more people just like yourself will be able to discover the podcast. I have one more episode coming up for you this Friday. A very, very special episode with my brother from Cryptopsy, the great Ali Pinal, who also plays bass for Cattle Decapitation, Acurian, and Vengeful. And this is a very, very cool episode because we go through our top metal albums of 2020, and just like this Brewer one, there's a bunch of honorable mentions. This Vox and Hops episode was brought to you by Sound Talent Media. So until then, remember to enjoy life, metal, and craft beer. Cheers, Vox and Hops hits. Oh,